instead of uh, having a visualization uh, basically offering to a uh, information seeker or an individual right so there are two aspect uh, aspects uh, which are typically important to understand that the first part is naturally uh, visualizing anything on gui will help you as a user will help you to understand uh, facts or data or anything easily right so whenever we are portraying a crude form of data on a gui it may, it will it will may be difficult to understand you what what is the meaning of that data what is the impact of what is the position of that data object and what is the relationship of a one object uh, with the second object on a gui so you cannot understand so let's take again the same example uh, sorry let's take the again again the same example of google earth so let's say google earth or google map uh, if if google map simply portrays or map the coordinate value of your location or your uh, house so it is very difficult to understand the crude form of your data so so instead of that google, google map is offering you the actual or real time map or real time picture of your house or maybe the location or maybe destination it will it will easy to perceive you can understand the, the 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 notations of the roads notations of the house and there are various paths and other things so so simply by portraying the data into the form of visual picture or visual graph or maybe visual uh, uh, structure it will be easy to perceive or easy to understand right second aspect is basically whenever we are portraying a data in a, a visual form it will be easy to it will it will be easy to basically uh, play with the data so suppose for any 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 task user is operating with data so instead of uh, uh, a crude form of data which is like a list view or maybe any kind of uh, tabular view it is easy to to basically play with the data so you can simply operate on it you can simply select on it you can uh, uh, save it or bookmark it easily right so what what basically the effect or after effect of adapting a visualization is basically is to reduce is to basically uh, 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 the reduced uh, user effort on the on the any process so suppose user is searching for something this uh, whole uh, visualization aspect will reduce his his effort on understanding the semantics of data and and basically the overall effort on the query formation skill right so so broadly we have understood that from where we began with visualization and now what is the advantage of uh, uh, visualization offering to you right so so from uh, the various uh, uh, so if you observe the various research efforts by uh, various uh, labs and individuals working on this information visualization part it has been a widely observed that uh, it is it is like a, it is it is basically becoming a trend to uh, plug a uh, visualization interface with any kind of system whether whether you are designing a simple search system or recommender system or or simple information system or any kind of system so whenever user or naive user is is there to operate with system you, you plugging a visualization is very important and it will be uh, naturally uh, enhancing the possibility of system success actually as far as user is concerned because uh, when when a user is uh, uh, basically uh, adaptable to a system it always depends on how uh, the interface is designed what are the features you are plugging into the system which are easy to use for a user right so now next we are going for uh, the tip under, under, uh, try to understand what what is the basic advantage of a visual portrayal actually so whenever uh, uh, we plug our gui uh, or when we any visualization efforts basically the very first thing is that uh, it will provide you the capability to basically portray a data which is kept in maybe in the tabular form or maybe in some kind of ontology or maybe in some kind of uh, 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 n dimensional data so you can easily portray the data in a multi dimensional uh, uh, view and and you can peek inside it okay. so you can and so suppose let's take a example uh, like uh, in the right side of this uh, slide you can see the uh, there is a map actually this map is it represents the the overall map actually overall uh, connectivity map of a user samir khan so samir khan is placed somewhere somewhere here and you can understand that these the person who are represented here, this part 
or maybe this part or maybe this part they are basically following they are following actually the samir khan right and this side part is representing the users who who are followed by uh, samir khan so you can easily portray and this connectivity graph represents the overall connectivity or position of user samir khan so this might be a uh, a typically ontology based data which is uh, illustrating the uh, the various in and out connection of a user samir khan and there might be other various informations like uh, the interest level or number of interest matching with certain user with samir khan and there might be some other other things are which are coming from the linkedin data actually so you can so suppose you can extract you are extract the data from linkedin and you want to portray it uh, to understand the various insights or various uh, uh, semantics of uh, the data which is extracted of a user samir khan so you can do this so there is a facility called a linkedin map or linkedin lab they have created this is to understand the changing the changing graph of a user so suppose user is having lot of impact so uh, they, they they can easily understand by this kind of visualization so instead of uh, reading the various Uh, semantics various detail about uh, the users connectivity through various uh, uh, features they can have this view and uh, easily they can operate with it so so basically uh, by uh, this representation we can have a basic idea about the possible interest of uh, like so suppose uh, uh, there is a query like uh, who is the person who is having the strongest connectivity or strongest relation with user samir khan so the person uh, might uh, be of this part where we are having all the person who is following samir khan so you can see the this density uh, in the graph and you can observe that uh, in this part or in this region there are a number of user who are following with a maximum number of interaction with samir khan so by using uh, this visualization one thing you can easily identify so suppose there is a, a specific interest on an object you can easily map and spot uh, user right so along with it uh, there are other advantages of portraying a data uh, like uh, uh, after portraying a data you can easily under, uh, identify or locate the relationship or hidden relationship so like so you 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 always wanted to understand who are these users like like who are these users who are having uh, like very rare and and basically exceptional relationship uh, with user samir khan who is this user who is having this single relationship? so you can have this kind of study so in data mining we used to refer these kind of uh, analysis as a outlier detection so you can uh, and so why so you can operate or you can perform a why kind of analysis why there is a relationship by uh, between these two these two nodes right so basically ask and and eventually uh, if you are operate on uh, this kind of representation you always develop some kind of insight about uh, uh, the overall network of a user so, so like so so next next we will understand so along with that uh, i have uh, taken out this this very exceptional and important uh, uh, slide uh, so there is a system developed by uh, general electricals There is a, this company is a number one company in uh, manufacturing uh, electrical equipments, and they are having huge lab setup for uh, for that. Along with that, they are working on a, a, some kind of uh, electronic uh, records compilation. And after compiling 72 millions of electronic records of uh, various patients and individuals, uh, basically they have come up with this GUI where they are having. Uh, uh, basically, accurated uh, curated uh, the various disease and their Uh, dependence with other disease so let's take uh, uh, there is this uh, you know uh, there is this uh, 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 disease called acute uh, sinus uh, inflammation so this might have some 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 correlation with other 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 disease also so, so like sore throat is having some kind of connectivity with upper respiratory uh, tract tract infection so so by this you can easily understand that uh, suppose a individual is is basically Uh, uh diagnosed with some kind of uh, disease uh you can easily trace out that what is the next possible disease he might have right so so initially this g company ge have developed this kind of uh, a chart to visualize the dependency or the relation with the disease one disease with other disease now uh, uh 
we can easily understand that what is the size of so size of this bubble or size of circle represents the uh, percentage or maybe the density uh, 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 of a disease in, among these 72 million records so uh, so one thing is very important uh, so whenever you uh, we are developing a goi you need to understand uh, what will be the impact uh, uh, of representing a certain kind of disease or pattern so in uh, in this goi geriatrics has simply portrayed the a percentage of uh, records have diagnosed with certain disease with the area or the size of bubble and connectivity this the, the strength of connectivity also represents the possibility of uh, one disease with other disease so right so like this disease is basically have some kind of connectivity with uh, abnormal pain and other disease so but but the 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 this uh, the uh, basically uh, the strength of a line connection it also represents the possibility rate right so next next uh, there is another, another example which so the, the name of this system is called health lens infoscope uh, and it is it is available uh, for the public domain use and you can have access on that you can simply search health scope by ge and then you will have the basic idea about how they are designed what is the basic tool they have used and what is the other formulation they have adapted for uh, portraying this information okay so next next we will uh, we will see uh, another very interesting system, uh, and it is developed by Google, and it is referred as the uh, music timelines, right? So uh, here they have simply collected the information uh, about different uh, uh, musical tracks or uh, musical data uh, since for 2019, 2010. Uh, to, so, so if you want to run it, uh, it will be, it will extract all the data uh, collected uh, in Google Music uh, database. Uh, from uh, 2019 year and they will simply portray uh, the percentage of you know what is the percentage of uh, music generated so like in 1950 this jazz uh, genre of music has been hugely generated by different uh, type of inner sub genres right so within that uh, within the jazz, jazz uh, genre there are comedy and and these, these kind of things so so it is simply portraying the percentage of music generated uh, in a year and it is basically compiling all the other things i mean all the all other existing genre of music right so this system is also again available for uh, general purpose of understanding so you can simply go go to the google itself and search for music timelines and google music will will be there available for uh, play actually. and along with this this simple gui a uh, simple interface so when you want to understand the insights of a rock music so you can simply plug or simply click on this 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 area anywhere in this area it will simply uh, zoom into that data so within that rock you will have again a different type of uh, uh, visualization so you can simply uh, click on a certain area you can play with it right so uh, so we can go for next presentation and this might be uh, okay so this this is coming from uh, this uh, from Twitter data. So uh, so may, one day, actually, one particular user assumed that it is very important to understand uh, the happiness label. So average happiness label, right? So so suppose uh, you want to understand what is the happiness level uh, in a particular year, right? So based on the data extracted from the Twitter from the global user, uh, so this, this right side uh, in axis represents the label of happiness this might be a simple numerical uh, uh, score or maybe the labels it starts from 5.8 i don't know why why they have placed this this might be a simple level of happiness score and this this particular graph is plotted for year 2014 so you can see the window here here window this prints the whole year of 2014 and this is somewhere uh, parallel 2014 and october july so, so likewise so they are simply having this kind of GUI there they have placed. So this is your main axis, right? This is your main axis. And upside, upside of this axis, upper side of this axis, they are uh, uh, basically all the all the events are plotted which are having higher happiness index or have higher happiness score. And the low, lower side of it, the events which are uh, causing the uh, or maybe lowering or decreased happiness level. So you can easily understand that this crazy Christmas day on on some day between October and April is having the highest level of happiness score with six point, uh, maybe six point, uh, uh, six point two four or two eight, any kind, anything, anything between six point three, right? 
similarly there is an event which is called arrest of julian weber is having lower or maybe the lower side of score again there is a not not guilty verdict of george gilmenian is is having lower score so arrest of so, so this is this is a simple portrayal of information right so once you click on particular node in this graph itself so once you click on a particular node it will basically open the various sub events or various uh, details about uh, this particular uh, event so if you click on christmas day it will again open a new gui uh, where we might have the various users various post which contributed most for this event so this kind of visualization of visual search you can conduct right so now next we will understand uh, the various uh, other other related aspects to our information visualization right so till now we have broadly and uh, 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 we have uh, actually widely kept that uh, there is one concept which might uh, help you to to basically plot everything understand everything on a, a on top of the system which is at the time is information visualization right so information visualization is a is a basically abstract abstract concept which combines two underlying concept first concept is called text visualization and and uh, second uh, or maybe the the second level of uh, visualization is document visualization so right since so both us both concepts are having this visualization aspect right because the eventual objective is to plot everything so whatever uh, we have extracted whatever we have processed it should be it should be pl uh, plotted or it should be illustrated on a gui right so the level will be different naturally right so whenever we are designing a system to visualize something the first thing you have to understand what are the concepts which needs to be visualized right so like in the case of twitter data we do not have documents right in case of twitter data we will be dealing with text data right and if every text is is nothing but it a uh, atomic topic or maybe atomic keyword right so we will be applying some concepts to to basically identify the text identify the terms or keywords and basically then analyze them and then then basically group them and finally basically plot them in a gui right so what your objective should be there so like what is the purpose and uh, what what is the basically uh, uh, outcome uh, uh, right so how you want to visualize it that there should be there but uh, text visualization helps you to to plot the individual terms and there might be some concept which are called semantic so so let's say you want to plot the uh, uh, num uh, you want to plot the different uh, five events actually five events of a uh, daily basis so you can simply identify the occurrence of a term by extracting the hashtag words and then simply plot, plot them so this this graph plotting or this visualization will simply uh, conveys the level of a event with respect to second event so there might be some connectivity between these two events so this this simple plot, uh, portrayal of information with represents the uh, correlation between two events and the importance of event with respect to other events right so whenever we are dealing with text visualization you have to you have to operate on a text that is one thing second you have to uh, semantics of text meta means meta data of text so semant so like in twitter case of twitter data the number of likes number of shares and user profile information are the meta text or meta information about the text right so you have to deal with that also because the purpose and the role of those meta information are are very important whenever we are designing a, a text uh, visualization system on the twitter so similarly whenever we are dealing with any kind of text data the meta informations are are having a important role in the visualization so basically uh, whenever we are uh, actually targeting to design a text visualization uh there are two data mining concepts which are having a very important role uh one is clustering and uh, and there is topic modeling right so you might have some kind of uh, idea about these concepts so i'm not going to understand uh, discuss these two concepts for this but it is very important to understand the role of uh, uh the various uh, semantics of a visualization using these these concepts so whenever you are planning to design a text visualization system uh uh you need to understand what what is the role of 
one particular meta information will have uh, to adopt clustering or to adopt topic modeling for my system right so that is because the meta information are having a, a critical role to design uh, or to adopt some kind of uh, clustering for your text visualization system right so 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 basically whenever we are designing a system for text visualization uh, scalability uh, is, is scalability recency and pre processing are the three key challenges so because scalability means uh, whenever we are dealing with a system which is having a huge easily generated text data it is always challenging because in in modern days uh, whenever uh, we are designing a system for text data uh, the data used to be added on daily basis right because users are contributing on on, on the on the data uh, data set so there are huge data which are added or appended on the daily basis so that is one part second is basically recency so how you will manage uh, to maintain the recent data or uh, to be to be on the top right so so uh, that is one aspect so pre processing is always there because you, you need to deal with the huge data to be prepared before going for this text visualization <coughs> second second aspect is is the document visualization so it is altogether different concepts because whenever i say document it means uh, there must be a, some node there must be a, some one, there must be a object which is having uh, huge, huge or maybe the various details inside it right so it is like having a representation like a folder so document is equivalent to folder Doc document is equivalent to a node in a network document is a equivalent to a user in a facebook site or your uh, document is equivalent to a uh, uh, individual person in linkedin map so document always document visualization always have a equivalence wherever we are dealing with the, the basically kind of browsing things right so suppose uh, suppose you want to design a document visualization system you the very first thing you have to understand what are the various things we have captured within doc, that document right so so because uh, the de the details or the content inside the document will have a huge role in this kind of visualization right because the position of a document during the visualization depends on the details or the content stored inside a document right so it might be a relationship or a, of a node with other node or a, a, a similarity with a one document with other document so it is coming from the details which are which we which are actually kept inside the document right so so again Uh, the best the suitable techniques from data mining uh, for a document visualization is the clustering and classification so you can adapt uh, either of clustering or classification and, and simply class this uh similarity measures and and basically plot them in a gui right right so plot so visualization part is so visualization part missing it it is the difference right so the challenge in challenge uh, which we face during document visualization is, is the feature so you you need to understand what are the various feature uh, within a document and how each feature will be used for visualization and and this uh, inter document links inter document dependency and overlap between two similar documents right so these things are are, are basically little tricky whenever we we use to plan document visualization so these these two terms are closely related text visualization and data document visualization with information visualizations but but if you explore to the internet there are various visualization systems available which are falling either in text visualization aspect or maybe document visualization or maybe hybrid right so there are various systems which are actually visualizing Uh, two levels of, of details so, so at the top level they are having this document visualization and if you click on particular documents within document they might have some kind of text visualization like in the previous uh, slide we have shown this uh, uh, twitter happiness uh, uh, graph there they have plotted this one event which is christmas and there is other event which is called uh, the arrest of julian beaver uh, these are so these nodes are having kind of document visualization representation because the score of certain event depends on the various tweets coming from that event and the score of certain event is is representing that part the importance of that document or importance of that event and if you open that event it will have detail about various 
tweets and various details coming to the, that event. So at the second level, it is having some kind of text visualization, right? So there are various systems which are combining the, the, the features of both, right? Okay, so next we will we will uh, we will take uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, let's go forward. You can skip this. Okay, so now this uh, this slide is slightly similar, or uh, it is it is basically uh, to the uh, first presentation of mines. Uh, so here we are simply uh, uh, presenting the various fields where persons are research efforts have been done and various uh, research has been done on this uh, various portions. So if you see at the user interaction level, uh, there is this block called data visualization on which various people has been working from the last 40 years to, to basically uh, provide some kind of help to the user. So, and this data visualization is, is basically provided on the top of any system, right? That's why it is coming on the user interaction. So at bottom, we are having database layer and middle we have middle layer and the top we have user interaction. So, Whenever we are uh, designing a user visualization system or visualization system, it will be placed on the top of basic system, right? So, so the, 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 the systems placed on the bottom two layers will be a traditional system, but you can design a system for data visualization or visualization at the top of system, right? So, so we have clustered uh, the various efforts into two different blocks. So some Various systems are designed. Some are placed into this category called visual optimization. Some are called simply visualization tools. So there is a difference. There is a slight difference between these two categories. So I am placing all the data visualization system which are having simple visual portrayal, portrayal, simple interface to plotting or displaying the system, displaying the data extracted in this category visual tools. So wherever I have extracted some information, I want to portray on a simple GUI with some kind of representation. In this case, we are not providing any, any we are not providing any data play capacity to the user. You are not providing any option to operate. User cannot operate on the data. He will simply have some kind of uh, visualization on the data. And, and after that, he, 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 has to, uh, sub, he has to submit a new query, right? So he cannot operate on that data by clicking or by any, any operation. But in case of visual optimization, uh, we, we have to design some kind of operation over the GUI. So you can simply, user can simply select and drag a particular data or maybe visual uh, elements or visual block to certain different portion. User can, user can drop a keyword to the search box, some kind of operation. So all those systems which are providing some kind of features or operations to the user to operate on GUI falls into the visual optimization category because <laughs> They are operating on visual elements by using visual features to, to interact with system to operate their search, right? So there are two broad categories of visual, uh, visual uh, systems or visual techniques or visual approach or anything. So you, you have to place uh, your system into either of them. All right, so this is what uh, the all existing systems are. So whenever you, 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 if you want to pursue some kind of projects or research into this area of uh, information visualization, there are various systems available. Uh, during our study, we have conducted uh, a kind of uh, survey on around 151 different visual tools. Out of 150 and one, we have uh, uh, we have actually uh, selected 10, 10 for this presentation. Maybe in the upcoming slides, I will be sharing uh, around these 10 different systems. So after conducting the study on 151 tools, we realized that uh, uh, to design a system, you do not need to have a you know, huge knowledge of anything. You might, you have to select appropriate language or appropriate available uh, freeware or openware tools. And, and you have to plan your data, plan your uh, information, plan your uh, uh, relevance score, any anything. So you have to plan few things and, and you can adapt our language and, and try to club them. So it is a, it is a two-step work, right? But eventually your system system will be falling into one of these category, right? There is no third category uh, which where you, you can plug it, right? So next we will go for uh, a little detail on uh, on basically uh, how once uh, how a system uh, is designed and how you can place your interface, right? So so the basically uh, uh, suppose. Uh, 
we are assuming that in in the whole world uh, uh, there are three broad categories of uh, user of a system in random system actually so we can have uh, uh, one basic user which is which is basically having very little or limited knowledge about uh, how to operate on the system how to search how to start search what is the appropriate keywords so those kind of things so naive user is a user who is having very limited or finite knowledge about any anything or any any, any task which is which, which is going to operate and there is another user which is having some kind of uh, knowledge or maybe kind of training or skill to operate with data uh, right visualize data and third user is expert user expert users are users who are having the maximum knowledge of knowledge about the search or about the system and maximum level of knowledge about the system on which they are operating right so doctors or scientists are kind of astrologers or kind of um, various various individuals who are working on the systems or can fall into this category right so so whenever we are designing a system for naive user it can be having some kind of visual display kind of capability right right so for naive user you cannot place a system which is having maximum number of capability on the gui so he will will not have any idea he will he will definitely go for a different uh, type of object object so it is better to place a simple visual display on a gui and if you want to provide some kind of facility to that user you can provide some kind of navigation navigation means based on seeing the visualized visualized component you can go for some kind of requiring right but for a user who is having a little knowledge or little familiarity with the data objects little familiarity with the system the gui part you can you can provide directly the data objects right so you can directly provide the keywords and you can provide some kind of a uh, capability to the user who can simply tag them or label them or simply operate with the keywords so if user is a trainee user a programming user you can provide some kind of uh, uh, the raw data uh, interaction right but for a expert user who is having all the knowledge about the internals of the data set uh, the various functionality of the system you can provide the the, the basically a uh, kind of validation kind of capability to user right so further we can go for the next details okay so supporting uh, supporting the information search route so uh, so we will try to understand uh the the actually the actual support which which basically a uh, visualization system will be providing to a information search right so if you see the right side of the diagram there is this this upper block represents a typical search framework so here you can place any system your search system your recommendation system anything so this is basically a uh, the traditional part of your system and the remaining part represents the role or the position of various module to support or to achieve this visualization aspect right so that's what i'm saying you have to design the visualization aspect and place that visualization module or component on the top of that is in such framework or that is in such system right so that is what i am i'm 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 trying to convey you now the focus our focus here is to understand what what is the basic support we will get from a visual uh, 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 from a visual system or from a visual uh, interface right so 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 to understand it in a better way i have placed the system support for user search or a system support for user operation on a system we can broadly break them into two two levels first level is basically what what system is providing using visualization is is to uh, uh, understand the information right so system is portraying some information system is deploying some details in the form of visual elements or visual uh, uh, graph or visual uh, interface and system user can understand those details easily right naturally it is important to place some information with some structure with some uh, you know alignment to understand is an effective way so all those kind of things are falling in this dimension of character called visual implication visual implications are nothing but it is the dimension uh, uh, through which actually uh, we can understand the various facility is uh, provided by a visual tool to the user operation right whatever uh, features system is using to demonstrate or to uh, illustrate or to depict 
to the user so all those are falling into the visual implication right second aspect of the same visual system is visual accomplishment visual accomplishment is, is the feature of your system of your visual system uh which basically helps user to operate on right so let's say there is a uh, visualization system which now which portrays okay, which portrays various information now what is the capability your gui is providing user to operate on that information on that uh, uh, interface right so there are two levels so i am saying there are two dimensions or there are two aspects of a gui so whenever you are designing a system visualization system you have to carefully understand or carefully plan that my gui will have these features to plot the information on its interface and these are the features which i will provide on the system to operate on the display data for the user right so the action part on the gui belongs to the visual accomplishment what is the visual accomplishment meant user achieve from your visual support or from your visual screen and what is the visual implications system is providing through the visualized data right so like in the visual accomplishment if you see there are various actions oriented uh, options are there so you can conduct a visual search you can conduct visual exploration you can make a decision so decision making is there so by some kind of operation on gui you can achieve decision making and filtering you can filter some data objects but in this visual application side there are some some basically different kinds of conceptions like you can have intent modeling intent modeling is nothing but after reviewing the data visualized on gui you can have the the no, no your interest is changed now now so so base suppose you have uh, applied a keyword on a gui system and system have generated visualized some new information so, so after looking at these data which is now visualized you will have you can improve your knowledge about certain thing and and your interest will be now revised something i some something like this right so so based on these two this this classification under visual implication and visual accomplishment this whole discussion is is basically now have new new labels so now you can easily understand the visual implication aspect in a gui and you can understand the visual accomplishment aspect in a a certain gui now we will take further uh, details on is is basically visual implication and visual accomplishment uh, characters so let's take first okay so let's take visual implication now so visual implication is one of the dimension or characteristic of gui right so the basic purpose of visual implication direction or dimension is to to highlight three main aspect of a gui first is visual organization so organization means how you are organizing the visual elements the data which is portrayed which is planned to now represented in gui or through some kind of visual representation how you are organizing those details in your gui right that is first part second part of visual implication is visual signaling signaling means whatever whatever the structure you are adapting right so so suppose in a gui you have simply portrayed graph simply three blocks tiles three simple vertical tiles so you are adapting tile representation so this structure for a data is is also having some importance so you need to understand what is the most appropriate structure for plotting my data so under this visual signaling you can read out here there we are having plot structure trace map so you can have any structure to plot your data because plotting a data helps you to signal something right similarly the third dimension third third basically characteristic of visual implication is visual transformation so visual transformation is nothing but it is it is basically so it is basically some features based on which you can update the overall no organization so currently suppose let's take uh, you have submitted a query system have generated some data on gui now what is the option you have given to the system for a user to do something so that this whole organization of information will be you no know, renewed or maybe have different organization now right so this this falls under this uh, transformation part so 
For visual implication, we have three broad aspects, organization, signaling, and transformation. Under these organizations, because organization consists of so organizing something, uh, uh, basically having three, three, again, three aspects. First is uh, to organize, um, to organize the data in GUI. The first aspect is how you are grouping the various, various elements. So let's take for a user query, you have received 100 of keywords. Now, two, so 100 of keywords are, so these keys, each keyword is having uh, some kind of uh, uh, repetition, some kind of multiple occurrences. So how you will be organizing this whole retrieved data? So suppose at hand, you have 100 or maybe 1000 keywords. So what is the approach to group them, right? So before portraying a GUI, you have to group them. So for grouping one, for grouping these 100 keywords, the, the, the best suitable approach is to basically count their frequency and based on frequency, arrange them, rank them simply, right? So, so this is the one typical way. So basically for visual grouping of extracted terms, we can have proximity as a one measure. Similarity is one measure. So based on proximity of uh, one term with second term, you can arrange them. Similarity, continuity, value cl closer. So how two terms are closer, right? So these are, so under visual grouping, so suppose you want to perform grouping of extracted terms or extracted data on GUI, you will be using some kind of explore under proximity, similarity, continuity, and closure. And within proximity, suppose you want to understand that proximity is some kind of relevance or the score based on which I am going to, uh, you know, club these 100 terms. So for proximity, you will be using clustering. No, clustering is an implementation concept, right? So clustering, so you can use the clustering mechanism to basically group the 100 keywords into different different clusters. So by, by this way, you can simply understand that these 100 keywords are basically falling into some clusters. So now you have organized this, you have grouped into the clusters. This is how we can operate. So visual grouping is the one concept which is important. It widely used in different kind of graphs because you have to group the all different extracted keywords or all different documents or any property, right? Second uh, aspect within organization. So whenever you are organizing visual elements, visual information on the GUI, the second is the attention. So when we organize something, it is very important to organize these details in a way which can grab the user, user, you know, user attention. So, like in in the previous slides, we say that. Uh, so, if grab, so in, in the previous slide of general analytical uh, in medical uh, system, so we have observed that the size of a bubble for a certain disease is huge. You know, the size of different different bubbles represents the uh, the, the the role or the presence or the percentage of certain disease among the record uh, collected records so it is important so whenever we place something in a gui it is important to design some kind of elements to grab the user's attention that this particular part is having lot importance it is having little importance and this element is having least importance so so basically visual attention uh, for visual attention you can have any kind of coloring mechanism you can have kind of sizing mechanisms uh, right, so under this, there are some actions called you you can plan something to pinpoint object, right? You, if to emphasize something, you can plan something. So you can create a cluster diagram also. So the larger size of cluster presents the important event, some kind of things you can do. The next element under this organization aspect is visual sequence. So sequencing is nothing, but it is it is basically having some kind of hint to the user that from this element, you have to go to this this element. Right, so in suppose in a GUI, you have plotted various things. Now we have to at least create some kind of illustration visualization so that your visual representation hints a user to go from certain fashion, right? So for some kind of search, your system will have some kind of presentation to user, direct user, right? So now we are we have understood that these are the various aspects in a GUI you have to plan when you want to create the whole information on the GUI part. First is 
visual organization where we will focus on grouping objects and then after grouping you have to plan in the grouped data or the presented data which data is having some kind of importance so to use users attention you need to adapt some mechanism and third next thing in the organization is the sequence so to to help user you need to design some kind of sequence manner some kind of mechanism to help user to understand the data and after this next aspect is visual signaling so you will be adapting the appropriate structure to plot your data right so here you can have plot chart tile bar chart tile bars anything anything you can have and the last aspect under this implication or gui role is the transformation how this this user will be operating on this gui to change everything right so that is also important so next we will go for the second uh, uh, direction or dimension which is called accomplishment what user will be doing on this this gui so what is the facility you will be providing we will be providing in this gui to to basically conduct his task conduct his operation so here we so this 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 dimension visual accomplishment dimension basically focuses on the user's action on gui part right so so basically uh, we can understand that Uh, there are two two users capabilities first capability is typical is to search something right second capability is to basically operate with the data operate with the data which is basically uh, uh, plotted on the gui so i i'm i'm placing these two dimension of visual accomplishment in two category first category is to simple search which is called uh, information understanding right so visual accomplishment has first is information understanding so this part is to represents the simple search right so here user so this aspects primarily focus on the various capability on the system which will which uh, helps user to understand the information he will not operate on the information he will simply see the information he will simply observe the information he will simply save the information right but in the exploration part in the exploration part we will have uh, the most no advance or most well planned activity on the gui so that's why we are referring as visual accomplishment for exploration right so here we are having again two levels first level is search second is predict or recommend so 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 exploration means so user will be now operating on the gui operating on the information to to basically search his information that is one thing system should provide some kind of features some kind of information so that user can search his information second level is basically uh, is the predict or recommend so system will be able to recommend a new objects so whenever user is playing with information system will provide some kind of information provide some kind of information visualization so that use, user can understand that information is also important system can, system should predict the new object system should recommend the new object so these kind of facility falls into this category right so this is what this visually complex part is is the real challenge to achieve in a gui to achieve an information visualization tool right because plotting information is is i think it is not a challenging but uh, uh, plugging some functionality plugging some feature in your gui to help user to operate on the gui is the real challenge and there are various libraries available on different languages like python on and any 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 language tool any visualization tool which helps you to design those features on typical typical uh, uh, typical uh, user behavior right so we will understand uh, these visual dimensions visual implication and accomplishment in upcoming systems right so let's start so there is this system called u rank right now from this this slide onwards i will be i will be actually uh, discussing different uh, 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 visualization systems are uh, designed by different labs or different researchers uh, over the different data set that is one aspect different data set and with have with with different features right so you have to observe carefully how they have uh, basically uh, designed various user operations uh, using gui they have designed different they have adapted different representation for portraying their information they are having various features on a gui to to operate a, a user right so the data set they are having is in or in all 10 cases uh, the data set which system is is operating on it will be a real time data set and it is a public domain data set 
right uh, and uh, this system are, are also available on the public domain for some kind of use right now so we will start with the, this system called u rank so u rank is nothing it is a system which is for uh, basically um, how you explore the search results that is a simple explanation for this system so typically if you and observe that in this gui we have five different blocks a b c d e and each block will have some purpose each will have some each block will have some capabilities each will each block will have some kind of uh, uh, basically uh, visualization uh, uh, feature visual elements right so so this is the first block a block a have this query box typical query box right so and, and this this there is a sliding bar uh, to adjust some keyword frequency so typically so this system u rank system operates on a kind of uh, scientific or research data uh, this data objects so it is operates on on basically the research articles on on stored on some kind of archiving or indexing data set or indexing database so if you type something some query like uh, collaborating item performance so the three keywords suppose you typed the first thing it generates the list of keywords which are which are uh, uh, more frequent occurring keywords so these three keywords collaborative performance item has been typed by user now these keywords have populated and these keywords are extracted from these number of documents which are actually the matching documents right so the first you have to operate on the documents that is what i am saying in some cases it is the document visualization plus text visualization now so once you type the keyword query here these documents in the block c has been extracted and from each documents we have extracted the keywords most occurring keywords here with their respective frequency now these block a and block c are are basically uh, clear so now 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 you can slide this bar keyword frequency to adjust the number of keywords appear so you can if you drag this it will increase the the minimum level of frequency for the keywords so now right now it is having 7 to 81 so let's take user term user is having 81 frequency that's why it is appearing on the top so let's likewise so these these keywords are appearing based on their frequency value typical keyword frequency value within each keyword etc from these this maybe 100 or maybe 20 or any any number of documents you can place so after doing this we will we like like so in this uh, portion c we are having this position or this typically representing a rank and this shift is that i am coming on this part so this rank is generated immediately once these documents are retrieved so we are recommend we system is generating rank to showcase the importance of this particular Uh, particular documents right similarly here we are representing these keywords to represents its keywords importance and highlighting and highlighting outlining these keywords the position of typed keywords right so there is this called this term called visual signaling so we are signaling the importance or the position of our keywords among the overall keywords and we are placing these our query keywords like this and this and this the label particular term is appearing in a certain document right so document 1 which is ranked in 1 this collaborative word frequency is this label item is having this and the performance keyword is having higher level of highest number of or maybe highest level of presence so by this you can simply understand or your system is providing some kind of signaling or outlining the position and, and, and the importance of this keyword right this is what basically visual signaling means so you have to provide some kind of mechanism visual visual mechanism to to see the importance of typed keyword importance certain kind of keywords so this is uh, this is what uh, this b portion provides now you can go for section e section is is is, is basically nothing it is it is providing uh, some kind of dashed portion where you can simply drag a keyword and place them so it is like keeping the history or bookmarking the important or maybe the interesting interesting result articles now if you drag the slides bar placed in this collaborative within the collaborative tab 
this this shift will be different this shift tab is there shift is nothing but it is the yeah, you know it is the change in in change in uh, 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 you can say change in the rank or change in the importance of these documents in the documents when we change the level of individual terms right so this 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 is one typical uh, visualization system which is designed by uh, uh, three researchers uh, at us lab and now this system is widely available at their institute for uh, searching uh, the various documents various books various articles uh, within the university right so this this system i think uh, we can also achieve uh, by some kind of uh, visual planning right because the system is having uh, this term frequency is a mechanism right that is one part rank is ranking is one one par parameter and this is shift shift it is nothing it is a calculation that is again a computation of some kind of scores so based on two or three mechanism the ranking mechanisms you can plan the system so now we will go for next system which is called high relevance so this is again a very interesting system uh and 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 it is it is again designed by two uh, two researchers three researchers of uh, uk uh, uh, for representing the movie database right so they have collected the uh, the whole database from imdb uh, 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 movies so all the movies listed on imdb they have taken the data set from there and they have plotted uh, the movie database into this this kind of you know high representation so this is a typical uh, uh, representation uh, hexagon representation so this kind of representation we used to see in the cellular data cellular spectrum so, right so they have uh, taken uh, four parameters that is movie name parameters or features or maybe you can say attributes movie country uh, individual person and tags and genre they some some this genre so now they have used six different attributes so for six different attributes they have different six coloring so all the movies are portrayed in green green hexagons a country is having some kind of representations tag is having reddish or this green is, genre is having different so this kind of representation is to understand the different uh, details about the movies different details about the data now in between in the center you can have this search box where user typically typically typed uh, james bond and initialize his search so once you type uh, or submit your query the box wherever this james bond as a person appears it will highlight like this this block is highlighted right because in this box this james bond term is appearing as a person right so next you, this system is basically doing so whenever you go for clicking on this box james bond this james bond uh new james bond query will basically retrieve or change the uh, the whole structure and highlight the all other movies and country uh, and basically uh, details wherever this james bond as he is having some kind of presence so uh, in in one of the property which we say uh, visual structure so uh, in the previous u rank system they have organized this tile bar representation six different blocks are plotted in uh, different tiles now here they have used this hexagon box and this high representation to represents the uh, you know the whole structure and details of each each, each visual elements on on the hexagon box right so um, next so again this this whole system high relevance is plotted on the top of imdb database that database is is available for for free of use you can also create your own api to download the data set and and basically or uh, develop your own system to to understand the data set i am the data set in a better way you will get a lot of benefits you will get a lot of insights about the data set right so so next we will go for uh, a system which is uh, this this typically is is a recommended system uh, referred as a taste weights so you can understand uh, simply the recommendation so so basically uh, uh, this is nothing but this 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 system operates on a music database Uh, right extracted from a, a, a huge repository of various musics uh, collected from uh, from the various libraries now what this system is doing so once you understand that uh, you want to search for a music created by john so there are various musics uh, which are created by uh, this person so in the very first uh, vertical it is is it portraying all the possible musics he has uh, has some kind of uh, so this this may be the kind of 
uh, set of first set of music created by person and next level it will create the context context are nothing but it is it is a subset so let's take all the music extracted from wiki wiki music and all the music created from the facebook all the music which is populated or important available on a twitter so some kind of so based on context you can plot simple graph you can plot and then and within particular context if you want to open a some kind of recommendations you can plot so this is a very typical and basic uh, gui can create and you can operate uh, by adjusting the weights uh, like this lock box lock thing is representing some kind of box so you can here you can do one thing you can customize the weights or other uh, see the possible effect of a certain weight right uh, next system is, is basically peer chooser system this this system uh, this visualization system uh, represents the uh, the presence of the various peers no peers or colleagues or the friends available in any social uh, network or social network system right so this system is is designed in 19 uh, actually uh it is in the first time then again it has been designed for uh, uh various uh, network systems available uh to identify the person who are closer to you right so here in this box in this list view you can see the all possible users which which is basically you are searching so let's say you are searching for abc person so system will demonstrate all the abc person so if you want to open up individual person you can simply click on uh, this this uh, uh, emoji and it will open all the possible semantics in this view so this 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 whole gui review will not be uh, having some kind of uh, uh, interesting uh, aspect but it depicts or it illustrates the various insights about this like uh, the kenyarist neighbor highly thing so it is using it is this gui is using different coloring mechanisms on emojis to represent the nearest neighbor right and it is having this this kind of representation active user avatar so it is using the different avatars different different uh, icons to represents who are active right so uh, you, it is basically having this uh, uh, the size or or the intensity and a link to represent the affinity of one user with second user right likewise so next system uh, again this system this peer chooser is designed on a orkut orkut database right so the orkut is now it is not no more available for users but orkut was the first user on which various research has been conducted and this peer chooser system was the one of the leading system or successful system which was designed by a lab and was published for general general public right so so the this the various codes are available for this peer chooser so if you are interested you can simply search peer chooser uh or uh, uh, python code or maybe the coding uh, coding uh, uh, lines you can search on the google and you will reach to the uh, portals where this code is is placed right so next we will go for uh, uh, next system which is called uh, uh, pulp system right so let's say so pulp system is is again a system uh, uh, so it is it is basically having this kind of ribbon ribbon portrayal so now this representation is called ribbon so you are uh a drawing or system is drawing ribbons strips to uh, indicate the uh, relationship or the matching with two different sets of results so let's take uh, you have searched for some kind of uh, research article right and and system this pulp system is uh, basically uh, visualizing the title of the pages title of the articles title of the search papers title of the documents now so this this whole vertical is of one particular year this whole article list is of one year for certain year 1996 and 1995 so so this one article from 1995 is related with this article of 1996 right so this this pulp this, uh, this ribbon representation is is basically to showcase the matching between two different articles from two different year that is one part and that is one thing second thing is that the length the width of ribbon represents the overlapping label between these two articles that is one second aspect says this this uh, there is a sizing difference between the articles right so if you see this this case of quantum something something so the the size of the bullets 
for these articles it is having different colors and different sizing right so this depends on on the connectivity of a certain articles right so if you see these articles are going to a single node may be placed on 1992 or 1993 so this may be basically because this this these particular articles are not having any feature references feature so there are very few articles which are falling in these uh, these articles right so to represent the, the position of a certain articles to his history and to its future these these ribbons are used and the sizing is important now you can use widely like see uh, article from 1996 there is a this huge uh, rectangle box is placed it represents the importance of this article right so there are n various number of articles coming to this this particular having similarity with this having mapping with this right so so to to indicate to visualize user you can have this kind of presentation and this ribbon thing is representing from this article to this you have to go because these two articles are having some kind of relation some kind of overlapping presence right so next okay so in this system we can operate by simply using on this so this this i am placing this pulp system into a simple such system because uh, on this gui you cannot operate on on by clicking or by dragging or by saving bookmarking anything you you can simply type a search title and you can simply operate by sliding the slide bar that's it so we are having very limited or uh, very few uh, capability on gui right so next we will go for lineup so this system this this visualization system is is basically operating on a database which is having uh, some kind of multiple attributes and you want to generate some kind of ranking of data objects so the the, the visualize data shows there are various schools or maybe universities placed and there are countries their countries and various attributes are placed so whenever Uh, so, so this is a typical scenario when we operate uh, uh, with various documents various products various individuals uh, various no uh, node or head kind of things so here in this this gui you can see the various institutes are placed so each institute will have some kind of attributes so these attributes are equally applicable to all other institutes right so whenever we face uh, this kind of scenario where we are having multiple attributes to 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 understand the importance or the relevance or the ranking or any any kind of thing between the data objects you can operate or you can design a, a, a this kind of visualization where you can easily see the presence of the role of certain attribute to generate rank of institute right so let's say harvard university is having first rank is from us university and the role of academic uh reputes or reputations or attributes are huge right so you can see the the overall contribution of academic attribute right so there you can place so, so by this uh, visualization you can uh, see the percentage or the importance of certain attributes to derive the overall relevance of a certain attribute certain document certain notes with respect to other attribute other uh, notes or other individuals or data elements right so along with the rank generation which is is the natural outcome you can see the possible contribution of each and every attribute right so this is what so this is again a simple uh, system uh, like in, in in the previous slides we have said that uh, one of the uh, possible feature this uh, visualization system provides visual accomplishment degree this is called filtering so this is ranking so recreating this kind of visualization falls under the visual uh, uh, filtering so here we can understand what what is the role of one filter on attribute so we can place attribute as a equivalent to uh, filter so each attribute each filter is having what kind of implications this we can understand right next system is, is basically cytology so cytology is widely used by uh, 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 various institute at uh, us because they they want to understand the uh, you know internal detail insights of a particular research article so suppose you have a research article at your hand now you want to understand everything about that article now this cytology system will demonstrate each and every aspect of 
of a certain research article you need to simply type the title of your paper here find paper now once you type it will directly generates this whole thing whole thing means it is generating so let's take you have type abc article so your article may be generated on 2003 so this is the year of that article so 2013 2003, 2003 that paper has been published now we are in 2020 so it will generate all the papers who have referred that article abc article generated on 2003 it will basically demonstrate all the papers who are referred that abc article in a particular particular year so let's take 2010 last vertical line so here we have each line will represents one article here so maybe we have very thousands of article in year 2010 but it will draw a link to a particular article where this particular article abc has been referred or cited right so this is what future reference is so it is going for so by this you can simply understand what is the presence of my article to the article published in 2010 now going backwards so you can simply see the possible articles so our article abc has referred these many articles from these different years so here also we have placed uh, 1982 so 1982 is the last year which we have considered in this graph and this our article abc has referred in in the text one of the article from this particular 1986 right so this this backward lining linings drawn in the blue represents the articles referred in the abc and the forward lines gray lines represents the usage or the reference of our article abc in the future articles right so by this way you can draw the incoming out so what is the presence of our article this you can easily understand So, and and if you want to relate your article abc with any any past article which this may not be referred by this article you can draw this so by this this path you can easily correlate what is the possible link between the article abc and with any article in any year you can draw this line for this year also so if you want suppose if you click on certain article in year 2010 it will draw a graph through which we can reach or through which we can define the relationship between two articles right so you can understand you can draw a trace or line or the possible way through which you can reach to a certain article so this this system is widely used it is used by various universities at us and it has been uh, uh, basically uh, recognized by various researchers that this this the system provides a real trace or real insights about article right so and the on the bottom you can have Uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, the abstract about the article ABC. So, so our article is this fluid interaction techniques for the control and annotation of this, this thing. So uh, this is the title, author's name, and an abstract is available, right? So <clears throat> this whole thing is generated. So I'll, for the illustration purpose, this whole thing is generated by extracting the data from ACM uh, uh, data set or ACM uh, data library, right? So we will go to the next. So here you can easily uh, understand this system. is a visual optimization system because you can easily operate you can operate so once you type title paper title you submit it after that system provides various features to operate operate on various nodes various links various portions you can simply click on certain article it will, this whole formation will be revised you can click on any node so this node represents certain article so if you click this article this will become the center node now so for the second query you can click on this you can draw you can if you click on any article it will generate the graph so this is this is a typical example of visual exploration system system will uh, generate a new visualization visual formations for any user action right so we'll go for next system which is called uh, um intent stream so this system is uh, a sort of very typical system uh, it is again a uh, search system i am not placing this system into uh, visual exploration because for a user query 
you can type any query in, in this, this is a typical GUI for the system. If you type any keyword here, it will generate this kind of a stream. So streams are nothing, but it is a search result. So it is, suppose you want to browse the Google search result, so you can create this kind of stream. So if you type anything like, let's say a machine learning again, machine learning, uh, it will generate the titles of the search results like this way, right? And so suppose uh, if you if you are interested on some particular results, you can simply select and drag here, right? So this stream will be available. And I suppose you want to drag something for next search, you can select and drag this way, right side. So it will create new streams, new streams. So likewise, you can you can uh, you can uh, understand or you can see the results. There might be some uh, link between these these two streams results so that you can understand. So the video demonstration of all these eight or 10 tools are available in the YouTube. So uh, okay, video tutorials, video uh, URL for this, this internet stream is available. So likewise, the video tutorials or video demonstration videos available for all these 10 or uh, ten or at least eight articles are available. Now, these are the eight arts, uh, eight visualization tools which I have found very interesting and, and uh, because they are operating on the real, uh, either real database or real data sets. And they are actually providing some kind of interesting feature to the user search or visual exploration. Next, I want to share uh, at least two systems which we have designed and we have discussed in the very first presentation of this national webinar during the uh, during the uh, the topic uh, of uh, how do you model search context or user intent. So let me actually it may be repetitive, but let me reconnect it. Uh, with the two dimensions, uh, visual implication and visual accomplishment, right? So the first system which we have designed on the top of uh, a research article is, is basically uh, called intent view. And, and basically here we have organized uh, uh, this whole visualize content on the radar view, right? So to visual organization, we have uh, used uh, clustering. So first thing is basically we have extracted documents for a query computer vision. And these are the documents which are basically top five documents we have placed. So these are the documents which are most closely related to or most approximately related to our query computer vision. And we have extracted various keywords from these documents and place them on this GUI or maybe this, uh, uh, this structure, radar structure. And uh, so you can see here, multiple dots are appearing. So it means we have cluster all those keywords in this form. And in, within this cluster, this, this reconfigurability is the one of the important keyword in this cluster. So basically, likewise, we have various clusters of the keywords. So the keywords which are visible right now on the GUI are the most frequent within the cluster, right? So like this keyword research, these keywords, vision, these are the no isolated keywords. They are not having uh, very close proximate other keywords. So because in this second periphery, we are not having any income. So within this uh, inner portion, inner circles, we have placed uh, the matched keywords, the keywords which are matching to computer vision, right? So here we do not need to place any 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 kind of this clustering thing because uh, initially when we begin a search, user search. We assume that uh, only match results should be placed. So, uh, because user is not so aware about his 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 information needs and user is not aware about the appropriate keywords, it is it is obviously happens that the inner portion which is representing which is representing the matched area is having lesser number of keywords because lesser keyword lesser uh, documents have been matched. But outer portion which is representing the related results, so related. With, by mean the user query and the matched keywords. So these two are used to identify the related keywords or related results. So naturally in the related portion we'll have huge number of records which are related. So that's why we need to portray, we need to organize those keywords in some kind of clustered way or some kind of grouped way. So we have assumed that clustering is one way of representing it. So here we have clustered vision, clustered, uh, uh, you know, clustered uh, uh, formation, uh, and within cluster, the important term is portrait. 
to to basically highlight to signal something that within this cluster this time might have the importance because it is having the uh, basically the higher frequency higher occurrence now everything is placed in some way right this keyword term is appearing in the most proximate inner circle uh, uh, these uh, these terms are appearing in in outer portion little outer so this this uh, this uh, this radius represents the importance or the relevance of particular keyword to user search now within one particular periphery some suppose let's take computer vision is is a query vision is your uh, first result which is most important so let's take there uh, there is another term appear appears here what what does it mean so it is me it is basically having a mean that vision and this another term which might appear here is having the same matching score right that's why they are placed here but relevance relevance so score is similar matching score is similar but basically they are placed in a different angle because they might have different uh, uh, you know semantic relationship with the user query so this angular motion angular position of a keyword with another keyword represents the the placement of a keyword with the user query so from if you begin from here to this way any vision is placed here and something is placed here so a keyword placed here will have lesser closeness with the user query right so that's what that's so that's why we are plotting a keyword in two dimension aspect one is the matching aspect on which this this both keywords are are appearing in the same periphery on the same radius second is angular dimension or angular uh, position represents the closeness or the matching with topicality which i refer uh, with the user typed query right so this way you can uh, be this now what why we have actually plotted uh, this 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 two two different colored uh, mechanism so two two different colored scheme so in a portion is highlighted with the different color after the skin is basically having this next important so by this way you can easily understand this in a portion is having important and really matched uh, results and outer portion has lesser important keywords but those are important and these highlight these these keywords appearing in the outer portion helps user to understand that you can use these also to to basically for next query or for something else so next by this next, next means so in this system we have uh, design uh, some kind of user operation support to drag a keyword from outer from anywhere to this inner inner innermost or central part so let's take let's uh, if we want to drag this perception to the inner portion or to the central part we assume that for next set of query or maybe for next search you are considering this as a important part and this uh, so you will simply drag this to central part and once you drag this this whole arrangement of keywords has been uh, revised because now for me this keyword is important and i will be considering dragging inside the operation as a positive feedback for this term so the next search will be focused on this but we will keep the first query result along with the current dragged operation in the system so we will not completely diminish the results of the first query result the first query but we will keep or we will balance these two aspects this dragging operation and the results of previous query first query we will keep into the system we will revise everything according to that and if you want if you are considering that this research term is not important you can drag it out dragging out means it is having some kind of negative uh, negative or less importance in my search interest so it will it will basically revise again revise the whole arrangement of this thing so this out this outline will be the same but this arrangement of things will be changed because it is working on some kind of relevance manifestation or relevance uh, calculation right so we will go for the next thing uh, which is called a uh, next uh, system which we designed this called aid which is called automatic interactive with exploration this system is a typical system which 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 uh, we can design so here we have again five blocks uh, it is closely related to the u uh, rank system because uh, uh, we have uh, the first system is u rank which we have uh, uh, benchmark for our study and then we have tried to design aid with with uh, basically uh, 
uh, revise the mechanism or improve the mechanism for uh, relevance feedback manifestation. So uh, there are very few or limited uh, differentiation uh, difference between the various user feature in U rank and R system, right? So here we have what we have to we have uh, provide a user search box in the uh, block B. Here you can simply uh, type query uh, uh, submit uh, no click on explore button. The results will be populated here. The first aspect happened. Second, uh, based on the results retrieved, we have selected the keywords, only few occurring keywords, and we have plotted this graph to draw the you know, keyword to keyword kind of uh, position. So if you want to understand what is what is this uh, social term, what is the percentage of social term uh, among the keywords itself? So keeping term frequency in, in, in the count and, and the relative position uh, count, we have plotted this graph. So keyword section, in keyword section D, uh, we have plotted the relative relevance of keyword. That is one aspect you can drag a keyword to the search box. That is one feature we have provided. So along with these two, uh, if you want to uh, keep one particular result, you can simply tick on this uh, tick box and the result will be selected for uh, future references or keep in, uh, keep it or keep out, right? So this keep and keep out, uh, basically if you click on this cross, it will simply remove a result from this section. So keep in, keep out basically is, is basically having some kind of implication and so if we want if we want to keep one result in a future reference, this will add some kind of positive feedback on this result and its keyword on the system. So whenever you go for search, there will be some kind of uh, consideration of the keywords from this article. That is what the positive feedback we have considered. Similarly, if you have click on this cross, it means negative feedback keep out. So all the keywords which are occurring on this will occur some kind of negative feedbacks, right? So this we have done additional to the, uh, this this what we say, mu rank system, mu rank system. Now in history section, we are again keeping, so here we are keeping the history of query, not uh, the history of results like in the system mu rank. So the objective of keeping history is to, to basically uh, make aware uh, to user that these are the history which you have typed in the past, so if 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 user is typing a query, he can easily understand that uh, maybe the same query is typed on the past. Maybe uh, he's typing a query which have different formations typed in the past. So you can simply select a particular typed query and drag here. So whenever he start this system, uh, we we make sure that uh, this history will be available. So naturally, in the beginning, there will be no history. So system should be starting from uh, a fresh. Uh, without any keep and keep out result section, without any history section, right? So that is there. So along with it, we have provided the numbers here. So so this this bar represents that whenever we are going for the second query, it will depict it will it will represent or so illustrate the levels, how many are re retrieve, how many are retrieved. So retrieve, re retrieve, re retrieve means again retrieve for the second query. Re retrieve means the retrieves which are new actually. Right. So every time whenever we're going for search query after second iteration, we will be deploying uh, or generating this this level of scores. So here we have you no know, one thing we have missed in this system is, is basically we are not able to uh, plug a feature we can which can represent or which can direct user to go from one section to other. So so user is not able to. Uh, uh, based on some experimentation, we have observed that user is not able to understand that uh, from which section to which means A to D or C to D from where we have to go and how he has to correlate that which information might be reused to, to basically conduct his search, right? So uh, we are actually, uh, after study, we uh, actually place this system AID into the visual exploration system because it is providing some kind of drag and drop and, and kind of keep in, keep out, positive negative feedback in the result actually, uh, and, and basically. So it is it is something beyond uh, a, a simple uh, visual exploration system, visual search system, right? So with this, we complete, I complete this, this part of uh, case study kind of sections where we have our nice uh, kind of uh, uh, study on these top 10 systems available uh, for, system, uh, for study.
and right so uh, next uh, uh, we will see uh, okay so again happening okay so now the we are in the last three four slides of the presentation so i, I the basic question which a user uh, might uh, concern about sir why why basically how can i draw a, a, a design of this kind of system this kind of interactive adaptive system so if you go into the uh, google uh, you can search for uh, the best tool visualization tools are available for the creating uh, interactive adaptive gui or user interface or data visualization it may suggest various tools various languages and within languages there are various packages or various uh, libraries available for that so based on my experience on uh, after working with my mtech students or btech students i can suggest um, uh, a few few uh, not suggest these are the various possible easy to use actually languages or tools which the first one is python naturally python is having uh, various blocks available for designing a very good uh, interactive and uh, adaptive visualization in fact uh, the intent view system which we have designed with our btech students is basically uh, designed by using python libraries and python uh, code blocks and it is it is, uh, it is uh, easy to actually uh, design and it is easy to operate uh and the last thing easy to integrate because uh visualization is again is one aspect of your system eventually you have to integrate with the your uh base system right so in the base in, in the below portion uh, there will be your your actual system or retrieval or recommender system logics will be there algorithms will be there and all the data objects retrieved from your baseline system base system will be portrayed on the gui will be pushed to the gui uh, maybe the visualization part so that's why it is important to realize that uh, that i will be going for a language or a tool which might easily integrate or push the data objects to the visualization uh, module of my system so that's why python is, is the most and uh, most uh, i think uh, easy to use uh, uh, language for this language r is also uh, uh, one of the widely used or widely accepted language there we can see uh, the system is having actually there are three, four five blocks are graphic systems are available which can easily uh, draw the graph uh, draw the draw the visualization or graph graph is something one 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 can relate so here you can have uh, so language r is can draw plotter uh, scatter uh, plots bar and stack bars are very very easy blocks plots are there histogram heat maps are uh, widely used by uh systems widely used by users uh, whenever we are working with text text visualization heat maps are widely used right so that is one part so java is also one of the established product uh, language uh, which can be used for this purpose that they are having a data advanced imaging component or box for that matlab is there scala is there julia so, so there are these are the frequently are mostly used or adapted languages for this purpose for data visualization for designing event visualization similarly if you go for tools now so various companies are having various uh, companies are having their own uh, data visualization uh, design uh, system but these are the few uh, publicly available or system available for uh, general general audience or general uh, persons uh, to be uh, adapted right so you can adapt tableau you can adapt uh, Uh, high chart data wrappers plot sensor so they are having their easy to use interface to to you know upload the data and you can after uploading you can portray the data so uh, you need to do one thing so whenever you are working on these kind of tools so you need to design one api that is the one challenge so whenever you are having a different or complex data set to be to be plotted on the gui and and uh, you have designed a gui to operate and that operation that system user interaction should be saved or pushed to the system ir system you need to design a api so in 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 case of tableau in case of fusion chart in high chart they are providing some kind of api uh, uh, which captures the data generated from your system to be plotted on the gui and there are various interfaces to capture the user action into pushed and save it to your system so so the few few tools are providing uh, some kind of gui you need to configure them 
uh, uh, if your system are not providing uh, this uh, API part, you have to design the API, right? So uh, the challenge in the tool part is, is to is to create the API. That is one challenge. In 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 case of language, you have to create some kind of uh, you know uh, uh, how they will be interacting. So in case of language, you have to see the compatibility of the object. You need to create your system on that language also, right? So we are in the second last PPT of the presentation. So let's go for the conclusion. So let's say uh, the conclusion. So again, conclusion is basically is is now for any kind of such system or any kind of system where user is available, you have to design a interface which can plot the information, which can deploy the information, and you need to provide some feature through which user can operate on the data in a different level. Eventually, the whole story is that you have to design an interactive, adaptive information visualization scheme. Right? Capability on your system. So whenever we are, so another, another outcome uh, is basically, whenever we are going for designing an uh, interactive, adaptive uh, visualization, uh, you need to design a strategy to capture the user's uh, operation, which I refer often refer as a user relevance feedback, right? Because designing algorithm to capture the data term frequency, its importance, its relation, its weightage is one part. Now you are designing a system to user to support user operation. Now, so that's why you have to strategize how user operation will be captured, right? What will be the mechanism? Like in our case, we have designed positive feedback and negative feedback. Similarly, you can design various ways, right? Second is, is basically uh, is, is in within a search. So, so let's take a search as a use case. So in a search system, you have to balance two aspects, which is exploitation and exploration. So whenever we are pushing a lot of information in our data, visualization screen or interface, you have to balance the details. You cannot populate all the information in one with a one intention, right? So you have to organize the whole information which you have retrieved in a certain manner to balance one or two parameters, right? So like in case of search system, you have to balance the matching and the related keywords. So you cannot push and publish all those in the mixed way. You have to organize that these are the matched keywords. These are the matching uh, related keywords. So you can place related in different portion, matched in different portions. So likewise, so you have to balance the overall records retrieve, right? So naturally, so uh, basically, um, the last part of uh, evaluating any kind of uh, data visualization tool is naturally uh, how you will be evaluating uh, that. Uh, what is the level of um, uh, data visualization interface uh, I have created and how it is good with the user. So for that, you need to conduct the user case study. That is, there is no alternative for that. And, and uh, ironically, there are a few uh, performance analysis are available, which can verify or validate the, uh, the usability or the, uh, you know, viability of a GUI or a user interface, data visualization interface, for the user, uh, so that so that you have to design that you have to conduct uh, at least uh, thirty to forty number of different users, different types of user. Which I have said that uh, if you want to test your system, you can organize or you can arrange uh, around ten to uh, ten to twenty people out of fifty, twenty people of naive type system users who are not having who are having lesser experience, lesser knowledge about the system your system, not all systems. Second, uh, you can arrange few students or few uh, users of type, uh, train, little trained, little familiar, right? Little skilled users. Uh, you may conduct some kind of, uh, you know, training to them. So for second type of user, you can conduct some kind of training that, okay, our system is like working like this way. Now, uh, if you are trained, now you can you operate for this query, right? Third, you, uh, you can have third type of user is kind of uh, expert users. So in this category, you can keep five or six people to test your system. So you can create 50% of 50 users and organize them into three different blocks, uh, three different groups, 
and then conduct a study by asking them to conduct their research task and and you can ask, leave them through to to basically uh, use the system and after that you can use you can conduct the various analysis like how they are using features what, what is the time total time uh, taken by uh, each user for certain task so you can assign one particular task to all three users and observe their behaviors uh, how much time how much total time is is the one thing something important uh, uh, is user is our user are actually performing various features of your system and what what, uh, what and how they are feeling uh, after uh, consuming various features of your system right so likewise you can conduct various uh, uh, performance evaluation of your, your gi because you know so you need to see what what are the various elements i have designed in my system and what is the user interaction level and what is the effect of users interaction with that feature that you should be doing that because it is important to understand the overall uh, purpose of each feature each detail each organization of the system right so thank you for uh, uh, for this opportunity uh, from my side that's it uh, that's that's all detail i can share with this so uh, i might have uh, this presentation in a in a, in a uh, detail fashion but uh, because uh, uh, one thing i wanted to share with the you that we have conducted this huge study uh, with the uh, just a minute i will be sharing something with you i will be posting a simple okay so this is what we have done so we have taken so around uh, in the beginning of the study we have conducted uh, a overall analysis on um, around 151 different visualization tools so i am sharing a brief summary uh, this is how we have conducted we have selected only only 51 top tools 51 top tools means top these are the 51 tools visualization tools which are uh, referred or maybe uh, uh, recognized by the different uh, users or uh, different readers in the research fraternity so we so like uh, we have placed in the top we have placed uh, visualization visual organization the three aspect of visual organization and the new signaling and the visual transformation so for this u rank system which we have discussed in some slide this is the activity or maybe property u rank system is adapted for Uh, visual grouping. So, Urang system is working on scientific document. So, to to group something, system is extracted. Clustering is used, and it is clustering the results. Results means keywords or the documents, right? So, this is how we have an LI system. Urang is basically adapted clustering mechanism to cluster the results and to visual attention categories where we want to emphasize something. it simply located the rank so, so ranking mechanism is used so rank value is used to to basically grab the users attention so by looking at the rank user can easily understand that some document or some keyword is important right further visual sequencing so to to indicate now from here to here where to go I mean, so system, u rank system is using again rank value rank of recurrent document to highlight the sequence right after this document this is placed so we have so in this system u rank rank and the shift score two scores are used to indicate the sequence that which one to be followed right further under this visual signaling property where we say which structure it is using so it is using plot or maybe staked side a staked bars right so staked bars are used where it is placed that this particular document is having the presence of these three documents with this is taking bar now to modification it is having a correlation between keywords right so this way we have conducted a, a huge study it took uh, i mean huge amount of time to analyze various features of various tools and we have organized this study and published uh, articles uh, about the whole thing how thing so after this so what is the outcome of this this analysis the first outcome we have observed that now we so whenever we are going for designing a, a new data visualization uh, interface we will be observing the various details our system is generating and we will be basically understanding or observing 
the suitable aspect for our system right so let's say uh, i will be designing our system a aide now we have seen that the details which we our system is generating is closely similar to u rank system now u rank is having these clustering thing here locate thing is for this aspect so i can easily correlate the similarity between two system and i can plan my system in my own way but the first suitable aspect first suitable action we can uh, take from this this study and and basically for for our designing our system similarly this is about visual implication feature we have conducted this systematic systematic survey on the features of uh, visual implication feature of, of these uh, 51 tools similarly we have conducted the, the same same kind of analysis over uh, these same 50 51 tools uh, visual tools on this visual implication right so visual implication indicates the possible user action uh, to be to be to be planned or it can happen on over a gui so so uh, for the same rank u rank system system emphasize the frequent terms so so right so this way you can understand and it is suitable for an ie user so that's what we assume we assume that uh, this u rank system is used is it used or it is it is it is easy to adapt by a simple user who is not having much idea similarly for high level uh, second system which we have discussed which is high relevant system this this uh, naive it is again used it is used for my user right so with this uh, i'm closing my presentation my discussion uh, now i am open for any kind of question or questions which i can take okay hello okay so i am open for questions so uh, i am able to read this chat box but in chat box we uh, there is no question actually so we can we can start uh, if you have any question madhav sir uh, hello uh, yes sir so do we have any question right now Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, grateful session, and uh, I would like to request to all of you students to please uh, question from relevant topic. If any, so please uh, drop in chat box. sir you have mentioned okay let me read the question so the question is from uh, some student uh, he is written that uh, as you have mentioned to grab the user attention we pin point certain things and use various parameters how do we analyze that what we have highlighted is significant is there post analysis for that so i mean i think question is having multiple uh, sub questions so first question uh, is is basically uh, to grab the user attention we pinpoint certain things and use various parameters how how do we analyze that okay so uh, actually uh, in visualization to grab user attention uh, the first thing is is basically grabbing attention is something to with uh, users importance right so if i visualize uh, let's take a twitter uh, data analysis so let's say you have extracted the data and and hashtag data and uh, you have plotted all the important events of today's uh, top 10 events right uh, so naturally to signify that certain event is, certain event is very important you, you either you need to place them in a rank so rank itself represents the importance of event or you can go for circular i mean circular or bubble representation so the size of bubble will represents the 
uh, importance at that event and whenever users see that visualization which you have created it can automatically correlate that the size of the very first event is huge it is bigger than the others other nine it means that event is important so so grabbing attention is something is like that whenever when i see that screen whenever when i see the result set in the very first impression my attention should go to that aspect either it will be controlled by your, the size of object side the size of that circular box or maybe the rank of something or maybe some kind of uh, you know color changing scheme or maybe kind of uh, highlighting something or maybe flashing something so that you can do right so after grab after reading that uh, uh, object which is important on which you have designed the grabbing mechanism attention grabbing mechanisms you will naturally go for something so after looking to the the more the whole objective of this grabbing attention thing is that it you will go for a next search naturally so if you have design algorithm or design a gui to plot the events of events happening in the twitter today so after looking at the very first event or the event which is having the huge size of box huge size of representation you will naturally uh, you know excited for looking into the box why what are the various things which are which are basically making this event as a important event so the whole 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 story of behind this uh, behind creating this this uh, visual uh, attention is is that that we want to attract users uh, uh, focus and, and his attention to uh, now look for further details within that event right okay now next question uh, is basically uh, ask with us sanskar he says what are some issues you faced while dealing with big data so uh, whenever we are dealing with the big data because uh, uh, my focus is 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 to extract the data which can be visualized or plotted in the gui so the big challenge is to pre process the data pre processing is is the biggest challenge right because ultimately uh, uh, your visualization will simply plot plot the information it will not provide any kind of pre processing mechanism for you know pre processing the data actually so whenever you are having a big data any kind of big data either so in the current semester one of my student is is working on the twitter data so we are trying to develop some kind of visualization through which we can visualize the events happening in a certain country and sub events which are uh, created by uh, that one main event right that's what we are trying to understand so in the very small that in that very small project we have extracted the data from twitter on the daily basis data we have collected but when it comes to pre processing it when it comes to extracting the various features of a particular data object so let's take we want to extract a particular tweet we want to extract the number of tweets number of likes number of retweets and the various information of the user who tweeted it so these information we have essentially considered that important will be important for our planning so uh, now we have actually uh, extracted all these things now to achieve some objective some visualization we need to plug all these things so again pre process so these th these things are are part of pre processing now pre processing the tweet content extracting the hash, hash keywords extracting the other keywords pre pre processing it and and basically pre processing the various uh, information extracted from tweets tweets meta information and user meta information then clubbing all these into one thing is, is the big challenge right so you have to make a useful and and you have to make your own pre processing blocks you cannot rely on the traditional pre processing techniques like uh, lemmatization and, and tokenization so these are the traditional but you have to come up with your own pre processing modeling uh, uh, techniques right that is one thing okay so next we are going to go for uh, that's it for next question is coming from pooja what techniques can we use to handle missing data so 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 missing data is something uh, actually it is the most frequent uh, occurring uh, uh, problem with the big data actually so who the students who are interested or in working on this big data uh, domain or big data related uh, uh, area this missing data is one big challenge because uh, uh, let's take again let's take twitter data so 
Twitter is is now posting uh, very limited uh, you know attributes. So if you observe the whole thing about a uh, one tweet, you will get only eight or ten attributes. That's it. But can you imagine what is the whole what what is the entire uh, set of attributes for a tweet? So there are around one hundred twenty eight attributes associated with the one one particular tweet. So we are getting only eight or ten attributes to analyze the Twitter or Twitter related analysis. So again, to achieve something, you can work upon eight or ten attributes. But to achieve something big from Twitter data, you need uh, you need you need to have this availability of all remaining fields. So this is what is happening with Twitter. We are having limited limited attributes, and and in within eight or ten attributes, we are having various. You know, missing values for the various fields. So, again, uh, for missing data, uh, either you need to create your own mechanism. That is one thing I can assume, uh, because I am not, uh, I mean, much into this missing data uh, part. Uh, so, either you need to design your own mechanism, or you have to design some uh, some fundamental uh, techniques for actually creating or dealing with uh, null value. So, because we have now we have various uh, machine learning techniques which can deal with the uh, skewed data skewed data data which is having various uh, 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 missed values or null values so there are various uh, machine learning or uh, deep learning techniques which can easily deal with this part so i think this this missing data is not a big challenge but uh, if you deal with a real time data set you need to design a technique to to handle with this right Okay, so you can uh, okay you can share your you can post your query to 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 basically on on, uh, on this this email ID on let me try v i k s at the rate ninety okay or a c let me try let me try okay so you can you can uh, share your query to me on this email ID v i k s okay the next question is coming from uh, Kanchan uh, he. Uh, the question says, what are the strategies or challenges that uh, information visualization should cover in the area of a digital repository? Okay, so digital repository is something comes under. I strongly believe that digital uh, repositories are are basically uh, uh, comes under this document visualization. So right. So what what so challenge is is it uh, is to maintain or to utilize. Uh, uh, you know, utilize the various facets, various features of a document. So, because eventually in the doc, in the digital repository, you will be maintaining uh, the various features of a documents uh, in a some in some manner, right? So, the big challenge is to is to use uh, these features for so for document filtering, document uh, uh, browsing, right? Because uh, whenever you are maintaining a repository. Uh, you you will be providing uh, two options, right? First is is basically is to search simple search, right? So user is type, user will be typing uh, some query, and based on that uh, keyword or a term, the system will be providing some kind of uh, some kind of text based search. Second uh, and most important feature as a repository should provide is browsing browsing support, right? So how can you browse? So so browsing is something which is coming which is based on the features. Features and as uh, features and 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 facets of a document, right? So like like we perform in case of uh, a flip cart or maybe in case of uh, 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 in in kind of e-retailing company, right? So so basically what happens? Uh, uh, you need to plug uh, various uh, facets and various features uh, at to support browse and 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 uh, uh, filter. As for a visualization concern. Uh, there are very limited uh, visualization aspects available for uh, visualizing the digital repositories uh, uh, because uh, visualization uh, on the documents for a digital life repository uh, can offer only a limited uh, you know limited uh, insights like like suppose you have two documents in a digital repository so you can think of what is the similarity what is the overlap between documents what are the matching features what are the uh, uh, you know, uh, author similar. So you can have some kind of overlapping between two documents, kind of kind of kind of arrangements. So that is what one 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 way of understanding uh, the role of uh, visualization on display repository. 
and if you really want to work upon this this uh, uh, this challenge uh, you need to draw a similarity between uh, digital repository with uh, uh, you know uh, some kind of so just uh, some kind of visualization on the social network platform so like i have uh, shared uh, one typical scenario that uh, the concepts which can be used for uh, mapping or creating a visualization for uh, uh, the social network you can adapt the same uh, same concepts or similar uh, notions to 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 a uh, document visualization also so you can adapt the various concepts and create the analogy and map those analogies to the different uh, digital repository documents right that is one thing so next question uh, uh, basically uh, how the tool deal with the changes in the data over time so so you need to create uh, some kind of mechanisms too. that's what i am saying so in case of uh, any kind of visualization recency is important part so whenever we have creating a system it should take care of recency whatever documents are introduced whatever terms are introduced on the data set it should take care of that so recency is big challenge you should be designing your system your 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 scoring system your ranking system to to capture the recent introduction recent addition on your data objects or uh, uh, within the data set right next question is by absex uh, he asks as in the big data there may be redundancy in the data and also not genuine how we can find the data is genuine so this part is again uh, basically uh, uh, comes under the pre processing part so genuinity of uh, any data object or any data element in the data set or in the database that that should be deal with the pre processing aspects your your visualization should not be there to deal with it right so your pre processing or maybe your middle layer uh, of your system should take care of this genuinity on the redundancy part of the data right next question is by pooja can we place a excel okay so this is not question this is instruction uh, okay so no this is question okay this is question okay can we place a excel fill in shared location and use it to develop a report and refresh it regular uh yes it is happening in the google sheet i mean i i hope there are various platforms available which can achieve this task actually i don't know what exactly want to ask but uh i think uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still not able to find what exactly she want to ask. No question. But where can we can fill Excel, fill or file in a shared location and use it to develop and report and refresh in the regular interval? Yeah, so it can be. It, it can be, but manual information I think may not help in the real time scenario because there was a question already asked by someone that uh, suppose we process the query as we process the task and some visualization parameters or visualization aspects uh whatever the output we have just found overall because the intention is not a constant thing once once the once we have just seen some visualization part or uh, some scenario we have just seen after looking the intention may change like the query search once the query is once the search uh, displays are gone there the intention may change that that may not even be unique or constant over the time that's how we'll manage that okay so uh, i'm waiting for the question so i i request uh, at least uh, uh, at least to the final year students that uh, whenever they are designing a system they should work upon this aspect as well right they they also try to develop a, a interesting gui and and basically plug some interesting feature to user right on their system so it is very interesting uh, area because eventually whenever you are designing a system for the user it is a responsibility uh, to the designer to design a, a most a, most suitable or maybe interesting gui for the user right because uh, pushing the information to a gui is one aspect that's what we are doing, doing till now now making system uh, more user friendly or user centric Uh, you should be working upon uh, a very good uh, visualization and, and, and various features, visual features on the GUI. Uh, right. So, so uh, Dikram, what from my side on behalf of this group? Uh, there are various uh, 
बिजनेस इंटेलिजेंस टूल इज लाइक पावर बी आई लाइक टेबलू सो आर वी गोइंग टू डिजाइन दैट ऑफ थिंग और यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एनी अदर विजुअलाइजेशन टू लाइक एनी मेनी अदर सी सी बर्न टू डब लेवल इन पाइथन सो वे आर दवर टारगेट इज okay so uh, the whole purpose of uh, uh, discussion uh, was was to underline the uh, difference between the traditional visualization tools and the position of current development in the information visualization where we are trying to convey that now we have to plug various features on gui itself so that user can operate on gui user can perform various operation over the gui over the visualized information so like in the existing existing scenario uh, uh, various bi various visualization tools for bi are available they are actually visualizing a uh, plotting the information for a informational purpose for a search purpose actually so when i say search it means it is simply serving the information in a visual form for a user requested query but they are very limited in uh, this aspect so aspect which i am saying which i want to under uh, 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 outline that uh, user is having very limited or finite uh, capability to operate on the gui right so let's take uh, the one typical example i have taken is, is basically google earth right google earth or maybe google map so there we we, we uh, there you can directly open the application and simply uh, by using uh, the control of mouse you can simply drag and drop zoom in and zoom out and you can reach to your uh, relevant location or the designated location so you do not need to type anything anything on that so that's what uh, 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 that's what kind of system we are trying to discuss we have discussed we have discussed around 6 to 7 different systems which are designed by different uh, set of people to operate on different type of real time data set so so we we are actually remove we reduce we want to reduce the users typing effort users uh, actually other cognitive efforts uh, and we want to control it by uh, by providing some kind of uh, uh, physical uh, moment of physical operation on the visualized information on, over the gui so we want to actually make a, a user more capable to operate on gui uh, so i uh, tool available to designing this type of system yes yes various tools actually uh, that's what i have discussed in the second last slide that uh, uh, there are various uh, libraries there is like uh, lots of uh, uh, blocks coding blocks and various tools are available to design these kind of specified uh, specific uh, gui so in fact i have shared few of them and uh, if any students want to understand or uh, see the actually how how rich we are in the uh, this this information visualization domain uh, are now because if you search uh, simply the best the best data visualization example so there are there are uh, around 20 to 8 20 to 30 visualization tools are available which can offer you to uh, to generate the best visualization and best control on the data visualization so there are various tools available so tableau is tableau is one of them uh, uh, that from so, past, yes uh, 1 2 3 2 up to 4 5 10 what is the as per as per number of user or ranking wise so that if you can understand these are the very useful tool okay so uh, Uh, do i want to share those uh, uh, list of tools or what no no just uh, take the name of those tools who are uh, okay. as per number of people like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay one, so i have uh, shared it and let me read, read out the names so in order of not particularly in order of so i will be uh, sharing the name so tableau is one of the best tool which is widely used by users for twitter data and movie database so various real time databases are are basically being plotted by tableau uh, there is a click view there is a fusion chart high chart data wrapper plotty size sense are there so there are various tools so if if some if we simply type a query on google that uh, best tools 
for uh, data visualization or interactive data visualization. So these tools will be the uh, part of suggestion, suggestive or retrieve results. So that is from two side and in languages, yes. Uh, okay, uh, so there, uh, uh, as per my knowledge, Tableau and Power BI are the uh, market leader in present scenario. Yes. So what yes, is the yes. in, uh, in them? So that student can plan and remove those areas in his uh, developing, then he, his or her developing new tool. So, yes. uh, what are the uh, drawback available in that? What actually, are the things uh, they are? So, it is not a drawback, it is a challenge actually. Uh, in a slide, I have shared that uh, we have two possible options to design a interactive and reactive GUI. First option is, is you can go for language. So you can adapt Python for designing something. Uh, and second option is to adapt some existing tool like Tableau and ClickQ. So in case of tools, if we select any online tool for uh, visualization or creating interactive visualization, uh, the main challenge is to deal with the uh, API part, right? So if you have designed a system to uh, identify the relevant results, now you want to plot these results into the GUI supported by Tableau. So in case of Tableau, Tableau is supporting some kind of API which can be configured. So configuration is the challenge in case of tools. I, because in some tools, uh, this API is available which can be configured. In some tools, API is not able. So you have to design the API as per the format. It is accepting the data and, and we can do that. It's like in case of Excel, Whenever you want to perform some kind of visual or graphic analysis, we need to plug some 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 kind of uh, uh, feature, some kind of uh, equation, some kind of parameters, operators. So likewise, in case of tools, also we need to design, we need to configure the API so that we can easily push the retrieved data to the API to GUI, WGUI, and in the reverse way, we can provide some feature on GUI and these action user action should be captured and submitted to our main system so so to, 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 to and from uh, action uh, uh, gui part uh, how we create a, this um, uh, id means uh, uh, whatever you say i uh, okay so tabling so these are actually uh, these all tools uh, which i have shared around 7 to 8 these are having a kind of a free trial and kind of free access for one month actually. So that is one part for, for paid operations or for advanced or premium accounts had to be created. That is one thing. Uh, so uh, uh, any any uh, library is available in C++ or Java or any other uh, or other popular language for this? Yes, so uh, like in case uh, of language uh, category, right. So in case of language category, because uh, uh, language, uh, various languages are also been widely accepted for designing this kind of GUI. But in case of language, we have to write a code or we have to write the instruction for creating creating a specific type of uh, visualize visualization uh, uh, interface or visualization effect. Uh, like in case of uh, like like in case of this language set. Uh, Scala and Julia both provides the capability for integration with uh, C and C++ and Madev is there for other purpose. Java is also here. So Scala and Julia is having all the support, our kind of support for visualization, uh, uh, creating visualization uh, interface with the languages like C++ and RBN versions. So that we can do. There are few, actually uh, there are few. Written, uh, yes. Uh, for, for creating API for uh, Power BI, for uh, Click, or for, for Tableau. So, uh, there is any specific language or specific way to do this? Uh, are you covered uh, this, this way? Actually, uh, they are providing uh, their own interface to, to create API. So, like in case of Tableau and, uh, and Click, uh, Click View or Click, Click View and Fusion Chart, they are having their own uh kind of editor platform there you can we can uh, design their own we can configure actually their api on their own uh, uh, editor actually so we do not need to install anything for that 
ओके वन मोर थिंग आई नो दैट फॉर टैब्लू स्टूडेंट टैब्लू प्रोवाइडेड वन इयर फ्री लाइसेंस फॉर स्टूडेंट स्टूडेंट आर सबमिटिंग देयर आईडी इन इट टाइम ऑफ इंस्टॉलेशन देन वन इयर ऑफ फ्री लाइसेंस इज प्रोवाइडेड फॉर स्टूडेंट फॉर लर्निंग पर्पज आई हैव ट्राइड दैट Yes, yes. Tablet is actually Tablet is having very good, uh, uh, but 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 uh, we need to explore everything. So when one of my student have explored various detail about it, and uh, then then we have realized that uh, for our this intent view system, we have created our own in uh, in in Python. But Tablet is having a lot of very good features. Uh, but uh, I think uh, in uh, user perspective, the Tableau is uh, only that that for presentation they they are presenting some uh, insight of data. So user are not able to do any query in that. So I think your system is uh, having uh, this uh, addition feature. Where, where, uh, so because Tableau is providing various features to flow to. to basically plot the data and and just drag and drop over on on the top of the data but uh, whenever we want to uh, actually annotate something you want to some uh, bookmark something you want to label something it is not supporting that so that's why we have we have gone to customize the code for uh, our project uh, over the python so that is one part actually but as far as this part we can take some inspiration so if 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 our requirements are like to design the you know features uh, visual features uh, on our gui then then we have to go for language based uh, language based design for it uh, if we compare this power bi versus tableau so uh, in uh, data science especially for machine learning purpose uh, deep learning uh, purpose or uh, predicting purpose uh, power bi is much better uh, as many expert are saying and uh, yes. in uh, in another way tableau is better so what is the conclusion between these two market leaders actually uh, all the tools available for for uh, uh, data visualization which i have listed they are are basically good for limited number of features so suppose data data set is having less number of features but uh, data uh, volume is huge so For voluminous data with less number of features, these tools are good. Right, that is the one 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 single difference between the the uh, best and worst between BI and and this stable thing. So, whatever tools are available for uh, easy to for to use in the, the internet are they are good for a data set which is having huge records and lesser number of attributes because attributes are something which makes uh, this visualization and kind of analytics. uh easy like uh, this uh, power bi and tableau is a market leader but i find find found it that uh, they are uh, simply just like a ms excel no nothing is, uh, like uh, uh, they have to do for long time so um, i don't find any uh, means a typical thing in those tools they are very um, uh, user friendly when anybody uh, having uh, to see the uh, presentation in it uh, how to design the thing so anybody can uh, able to design new thing on the basis of uh, uh, very very uh, short uh, uh, training so why uh, why people are not doing this uh, not able to do this uh, i don't able to understand this actually uh, one one big observation we have uh, observed that uh, it is it is it is rarely uh, studied or analyzed that what, what is the picture of my data what is the what is my requirement from the data what are the information we want to deploy so it is again you have to understand that. overall requirement the objective of the analysis for what analysis what kind of analysis we are going for uh, going going for this database and uh, so if we conduct some kind of study before adapt, before adapting a tool then we are, we can realize that this tool is not good for me this tool this tool is not good for me we can directly straight away you can design a tool our database or our study so it is it is always good to create 
So that's why so when we conduct this this whole whole analysis around uh, over on uh, 150, 152 tools, we realize that there are around 50 to 60 tools are available to simply analyze the IMDb database. IMDb IMDb database is nothing. It's a simple uh, collection of all those all the movies released world uh, released in it is it is 70 years. So there are. 50 tools are designed to analyze the same database, and those those 50 tools are basically designed to achieve some different study. So data set is same, parameters are same, users and their objectives are different from the database. So the objective should be drawn first because uh, that is one thing. Second thing is is the uh, the nature of user, right? So like like we are I, uh, myself as a trained user, I can use our uh, Excel, I can use uh, any BI tool, anything easily, right? So whenever I found something uh, equivalent to BI, BI system, I feel that this is a very simple system. It is easy to use. It is not good for my study. So I can design my own system. So in the second instance, if I give that BI system to a very different user, who is a naive user, simple user, he is starting his job in company, he will feel that this BI system is very, very good. And it is a lot of features which can be understand and which can be used by my analysis so it is again depends on the type of user like type of user means the users understanding about the system users knowledge about the system and the users knowledge about his own objective so that's why i feel we, that this bi tool is not good this tablet is okay maybe after 15 years the tablet becomes obsolete so likewise so when it because it is, it is about perception so so this this whole theory of data visualization or information visualization depends on the level of Cognitive knowledge of users actually. So that's why it is better to design your own system for your own for your own objectives. That is what. So that's it from us. Uh, I think uh, uh, the present scenario, student can go for B, uh, Power BI and Tableau. He, 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 both tools are very much easy and market leader. And uh, with the one week of training, uh, it's been able to perform many, many uh, good tasks of presentation. And uh, after that, they are um, industry ready to uh, go with any industry and uh, write, his, uh, write in his resume that uh, he know Tableau well, he know uh, Power BI well. Because these two tools are market leader and many people are required for uh, uh, this presentation tool uh, for decision making. So as per my finding, this this one is the uh, my finding. Uh, you you can say something about this. Yeah, actually, uh, what happens? Uh, uh, because uh, uh, once this this learning thing has been become a pivotal for our system. So like we we are now trying to fix or bug or uh, plug some kind of learning module in each each kind of system, whether it is search or recommendation or anything. So now uh, this computing or prediction and recommendation has been now plugged or handled by this learning module in any system. So whenever we are designing a system for real-time real-time user or real-time applications, the so one thing which is which which is uh, which is uh, actually not uh, gets um, sufficient or maybe uh, enough attention is is the GUI part, right? GUI means uh, interface. Where user can interact actually. User means the system user, right? So whenever we are uh, uh, generating uh, from our system something, generating something from a system, uh, instead of plotting it on uh, plain text or simple GUI, can we can we plot in a in a way which can which can actually uh, demonstrate illustrate the information as well as it will. Uh, 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 and, uh, it will help user to understand the other details also. So understanding part is there. So 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 can our interface uh, will help user to understand other details. That is the one thing which which uh, which GUI systems or relation uh, systems are offering. So it is very important to the students who are going to the industry that uh, they will get some kind of work. But they are working for this aspect. Like they have they have to analyze. Uh, uh, the objective of the systems, company systems, and they want to work on this aspect. So, 
uh, as far as design concern i always uh, uh, recommend recommend students or suggest suggest students to go for designing your own gui always because uh, creating design uh, creating a gui always requires some kind of uh, some kind of uh, you know uh, understanding of users perception right so, so let's take one example in the last last semester i have uh, asked one of the student to design a small project to to basically uh, draw so system is so his system is generating the learning paths learning paths means so 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 suppose there is a, a students who are in the very first semester of his btech so we our system will assist that first year students to select the subjects in upcoming semester and eventually our system will generate the possible career paths for him based on the selected paths based on the selected course so we have simply created a graph in gui we have simply selected uh, the gra graphical graph structure in a gui and each node we have placed the semester and the list of courses right so so it is a simple system Yeah, the course navigator. So based on that, assist a user simply or or the student simply have the idea about the possible outcome of his his degree, right? What will be the possible career option for him after after selecting these 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 different courses for these different semesters? So likewise, so we are, we are having the very uh, fundamental uh, uh, computing combination for this. We can select. we can easily identify that after reading these courses we can we can go for mba we can go for cat but if you plot the same objective in a gui where user can easily select the subject and he can select for a uh, certain certain semester and he can easily see that what, what is the possible career option for him so likewise we can design very system so uh, instead of going for a straight or simple gui if we can plug at least simple uh, if we can augment simple visual visual elements on our gui or system interface it will enrich the system acceptability among the users that is what the moral of the story is yes that is from that is that is it from my side it's my privilege to have been asked to thank you you are grateful for the time and effort you took to share your thoughts and experience with us I believe we can benefit immediately from the materials you presented about the image and deep learning application. Thank you again for the opportunity. I also long give my thanks to HOD sir and security team. Thank you, Margaret. And hope you can join us again. Okay, so so I close it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Because we have a uh, uh, Vijay Bhaskar sir uh, is the second speaker available in with us. So okay. he is continuing his session on deep learning convolutional neural network and uh, object recognition uh, by CNN. Okay. So okay, it is it was planned. Okay, it is. <laughs> I think thought that there is no session after my presentation. So okay, so it is it my presentation my session was completed on time. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Vikram, uh, for uh, giving uh, this so much time. And uh, you can uh, now with us with just uh, Vijay Bhaskar sir is uh, joining the session, and uh, he is uh, going to very good, going to give uh, provide very good knowledge and lecture on the CNN. So um, he is one of the best speaker uh, I think in the country for CNN and image. So anybody can take the benefit of this. So with this word, I welcome uh, Sir Vijay Bhaskar Sir to join us. He is from M A N I T Bhopal, and uh, he have a very good hand in deep learning and image. So all our participants are all our uh, uh, participants are requested to uh, 
see this interesting lecture and take the benefit of deep learning and object recognition with the Vijay Bhaskar sir. And again, I request our welcome team to uh, to welcome the Vijay Bhaskar sir. Uh, formal welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, welcome. I am closing. Okay, thank you. Yes, anybody uh, is available from welcome team? If yes, then uh, please welcome uh, Vijay Bhaskar, sir. Uh, I will start, yes. Okay, okay, Vijay, sir. Okay, sir. So, thank you, sir, for uh, a uh, nice introduction. So, actually, a uh, little bit I will give brief about on which I am working and how I am using this is deep learning techniques. So actually, I'm working on human activity recognition, like I'm sitting, walking, running, or sort of thing. We are trying to capture this using wearable uh, sensor device as well as computer vision-based technique. And then we apply different deep learning models. So basically, I explore CNN models. So today, what I'm doing, those, my topic was like data-driven computational model using deep learning, in which I will explore uh, CNN. So I will give every bit of things, small, small things, then we'll go for one example also. So there is fashion data set already available and uh, MINST data set on which we can apply this CNN model. So uh, let us proceed. Before going further, so let us see how CNN evolved where CNN is applied. So artificial intelligence, everyone is aware of what is AI. AI is like we are trying to, even machine learning and AI, I will give a thin difference between uh, this one. So we have data. So we are trying to find some pattern in data and trying to see uh, trend. Trend is like prediction, what this kind of uh, prediction is there. So you have data, exploit, explore and exploit the data pattern. And based on this one, you try to either classify or either prediction. So there is three basic tasks. Any artificial agent or any software agents or human agents have three uh, responsibility or uh, three tasks. Either it will take classification decision kind of problem, either prediction, we have to predict future data, or we have to automate some action. Automate some action is like a uh, real-time scenario. You would have some uh, reinforcement line uh, kind of uh, capability. In this case, suppose I'm in trouble. So some automatic action, I will say, which is series of action. This is not single action. So they, the basic thing, the AI agents should have decision capability, classification, which we use to different in machine learning. Then you have prediction. You have automatic action. So you see that this is the area where I'm using AI domain. C1 is computer vision and self driving and the best example of Google self driving car, which have all sort of the, they have speech recognition, they have a vision processing, they have a text processing, everything. So you can see that some image here. What is this? This is we are trying to find the object, object recognition. Okay, so we have some pre trained CNN models, RBS, ResNet, Google Net, and other sort, which I will discuss shortly. So uh, after that recognition, object identification, if third image, you will see that there is row. So you are trying to find by computer vision, uh, what are the obstacle is there. So road image by computer vision techniques, I'm trying to capture, I'm looking for building, pool, obstacle, pedestrian also walking, all sort of things are required to deal when I'm uh, trying to design Google car. So this is just, I'm giving the area where I'm using this AI. The famous domain, which I will discuss, CNN. Okay, this is basically related to image processing and object recognition. So it is not like simple object you can easily recognize. First, you have a layer of structure in brand. So, okay, layer by layer, you will try to understand. Even object you are seeing, you can see only 2D objects. If it is a bottle or something, in this case, you will see only 2D like rectangular. So you require uh, such a... Um, data set of the object where you can match uh, the object which you have perceived through computer vision like camera. So this is 2D image, you will convert into 3D image, then you will prepare your feature map and all. The basic difference between traditional machine learning and this deep learning is there. Here we will not provide, here the image directly I am giving input, I am not extracting feature, handcrafted feature kind of thing. So there is no as such handcrafted feature, the layer by layer we will extract uh, feature and we'll go from local feature to global features. Okay, as you see that initial I'm providing image. If machine learning is there, then I need to extract the handcrafted feature. But what is happening here? Here we are directly providing image as input. 
and the layer by layer we are trying to create more complex geometry from here. Second phase detection and recognition. This is also very popular area of AI. People are dealing where you have to detect the face and then recognize who is that particular, whether it is human being or animal. First, you will detect this one. Once it is detected there in particular classroom, suppose attendance you have to take. So you don't want human control. So you have camera, you have this trend is there. First, it will identify human faces. After that, it will recognize by training whether it is Ram, Sham, Sita, Gita, this way. So that is also popular application which is solved by the deep learning. Now you can see that one more thing is there. <laughs> that is prediction of uh, fault diagnosis. You can see that roller bearings. That is very uh, famous. Uh, you can see the paper. Jangal has published this paper. Prediction maintenance of fault detection. So it is looking at which, which severity of fault you can identify. So you say that initially you have raw signal which is very uh, complex decision boundary. You cannot see that whether it is red, green or there is no clear separation. So after applying convolutional layer one, you try to uh, bring the cluster. You try to adjust the data into the particular cluster. After sixth layer of convolution, it is clear that all data is clustered in particular groups. Okay, and then we are fully connected layer. So now the decision bound is clear. There is separate from blue. Blue is separate from orange like this. So initially, you can see that this is also very uh, famous example of deep learning. Uh, CNN model. Then third application of this one. So far, I'm just giving uh, application area of domain of AI where deep learning is going to explore or especially CNN model. So there is one famous model of uh, deep learning is auto encoder. Okay, so there is two kind of auto encoder. One is under complete, other is over complete. So this is the example. You see that you are providing some input. This is under complete uh, auto encoder. What is happening here? You have Initially fully connected layer. Next layer you have down sample. Okay, so it is like PCA. PCA is linear classifier. This auto encoder is non-linear and it what it is acting as dimension T reduction. So what is happening? Initially you have thousand cross tangent, then you have nine hundred, then you have four hundred. So what is happening? Actually, same data you are representing using less number of dimension T. So it is like PCA, principal component analysis, where you are reducing dimension T. Okay. Then again, you are extracting same image through this reduced features. That means important feature. Then you compare initial image and final image and see the loss function across entropy. You can assume. So you can see the loss function between them, and you try to see that how much I will able to. Decode. So this is encoding layer, decoding layer. This is also very famous using in filtering and denoising. So many times denoising is important. You can see in the right image what is happening. You have some noisy data here. Okay, why I added this noisy? So that no one can steal your images. Suppose someone is sending my biometric identity, like my gate pattern, my why, um, voice, as well as my sing signature. So anyone can copy. So what I could do, I will add some noise. Okay, I will add some noise. I will restore my image. And then uh, at the receiver end, maybe in between, no one can decode this one. So by adding noise, many property you can solve. Noise is always, uh, uh, it is not like that hardware noise. It is, I'm talking about Gaussian kind of noise, white noise, which is always beneficial. You see that the once image is destroyed, so no one can steal your pattern, whether it is signature also. So it is like encryption tag. So fault detection prediction already I told. So these are the domains. Robot is also quite uh, uh, very popularly we are using in robotics also. One application is uh, like uh, uh, state space search. If you have learned in AI, artificial, you have breadth per search, depth per search, AO star, A star algo, where you are search space is entire possibility. If it is binary tree or uh, uh, any sort of tree. So you will say that your search space complexity will increase non-linear kind of things and raised to power sum. And Q and this was in. So in this case, I can also optimize my search space using deep learning technique. So deep learning based function approximator for extremely large search space. Okay. So those who are aware of uh, depth for search, breadth for search. So you like uh, when you are exploring entire uh, universe, you will find very complex search space. Even you are solving some problem like you are playing chess chess game. So you have, there is opponent who is working up, uh, uh, against you. So you will you will have how many chance to take move? Suppose uh, this is my chance, I need to take move. So you will have n number of possibility to move in the chess game. So in this way, 
after taking first step you will have again possibility again possible to if you are, if you see the tree so your tree will size will increase your search space will become infinitely large and to search in solution through depth first and breadth first search is not a good idea we have to go for some optimal or some advanced uh, search space so deep learning is also finding to find uh, helping in finding the search space okay and then finally i am coming on where again i am using ai like recommended system you are going to watch movie so netflix is there and many things they are providing rating also which movie you will watch or either web series you you can see which web series you will see so based on a uh, rating or be, either you will ask from someone else you will have a recommended system where you are providing scoring similarity measures these are the things by which you will predict so this is also one domain uh, and video summarization text summarization text story generation all sort of things is doing through um, deep learning model there are some deep learning model which has memory based some is memory less so if you talk about cnn and other they are more memory less but if you talk about rnn you require memory also and uh, i will also explore what are the problem with traditional neural network when we are moving for this deep learning and the last application maybe you have heard about google alexa so it has voice recognition it has text prediction or language translation from one language to another hindi to english english to english. so all sort of sort of things is you can perform through this uh, advanced intelligent agent and it all has design in deep learning model okay and then last domain is the enforcement learning quite widely we are using in robotics we are uh, what what is happening that we are Uh, just not having data and uh, based on data we are not training anything here yes, real time environment run time i'm trying to mimic some behavior i'm trying to learn some behavior suppose robot is walking so robot has to learn its own trajectory it has to obstacle uh, avoid obstacle also all sort of things i'm not giving pre generated trajectory they have to negotiate during run time so that is what that reinforcement learning concept is there So now, uh, let us uh, one or two slide. I will put on a neuron so that I can directly move to CNN model. So this is quite understood. So I am not going to explain. This is in neuron is what this is basic computing unit in human brain. They have dendrite, synapse. One neuron will fire another neuron. So you have a certain input. Suppose you have to purchase the uh, flat. So what should be which proper flat you will purchase? The flat price will depend on three or four factor. Like suppose square areas. uh locality in all sort so you have input you have hidden layer you have output and you have some non linearity non linearity you will bring through some activation function because one brain used to think non linear so that's why you have input area you have some non linearity things and you have output you can have single output and binary output the limitation of neural network it it uh with single neuron you cannot draw such a complex decision boundary okay to draw such a complex decision boundary or non linear decision boundary you require hidden layer with the more neurons okay so the moment you will increase number of neurons it will get fully connected near because all neuron are connected with all other neurons this layer is connected fully with this one this is fully connected here and the challenge will come you will lose the generality okay generalization is my objective so that it can work for Uh, very good for training it the moment you will increase number of neurons the model will get overfitted okay so i'm not going in much depth of this one so this is how we are moving from neural network to deep in, uh, feed for our neural network what is happening you can see that you have increased the number of layer and number of neuron you can see that huge interconnections are there and you have to remember this much of parameter though there is single output you can have multiple outputs with one hidden layer so those uh, you can perform all sort of things through neural network but they have problems okay so they have a number of hyper parameter and it will lead for overfitting so output can be multiple or single so softmax or based on this activation the basic thing is activation function which is here which is bringing non linearity into my model and final layer is your linear function so now uh, directly move to deep learning training algo okay and then we'll explore cnn so deep learning this is uh, gradient descent based techniques and what is the problem you will face when you will make a deep neural net so this is like deep learning is uh, deep neural net mean that mean you have more layers so in this case you will suffer with the two problems one is vanishing gradient another is exploding gradient okay so first you will initialize some random weights you have input you have output 
you are mapping the input and output in between you have more hidden layer you can see that uh, here like you have this much of hidden layers okay this is my input this is output and this is hidden layer with some active i'm just moving in forward direction what is happening if you have 10 layers and here you will calculate your output so you'll map the loss whether you are getting actual output or uh, different output if there is gap between uh, actual and predicted output so there is some mismatch so you have to update these parameters i will update you will apply back proposition based technique so what will happen you will calculate the gradient if gradient is very small here the moment you will pass this gradient here it will always get vanished and you are effectively you will not learn anything your weight will become zero new and updated weight will become same so then your learning will suffer so this is the problem with the uh, uh, neural network with the deep layers, deep layer, deep neural network. They used to suffer with vanishing gradient. Second thing, once you are going for gradient, this is this is back propagation based technique. What is happening? You have to store these values which you have computed in forward pass. You have to store these values because when you are using applying channels, that time it is applicable. So you have to store all computation of all hidden near and near you know. So you have to store some. So my memory requirement is also there. Okay, once you have a in a slide weight, you will move forward pass. That is what forward propagation. Okay, so compute D and then back propagation, you will see that new weight is old weight plus some this loss function. Okay, what how we are calculating this uh, delta factor is minus alpha and this is difference is partial differentiation or loss function with respect to weight. This is your learning rate and this is your gradient. So if this gradient is very small, if you have 10 layers, so at uh, 10th layer, you have very small gradient, 0.1. So at uh, 10th layer, it will become 0 0.0001, which is almost negligible. So that is what uh, traditional deep neural network is suffering, okay? So we have to repeat this step till we are updated. Okay? So what are the limitations? Intermediate values must be stored until back propagation finish. So the thing is that when you are moving in forward direction, you have to store all values which is wastage of memory. So you require a huge amount of memory to store till that proposition is not. That proposition requires significant amount of memory that plan interface. Gradient as tensor behavior must be uh, stored to invoke the channel. So once you are calculating this gradient, you have to store also because there is chain rule of calculus we are following. Okay. So to solve this one, uh, there is mini batch concept. The mini batch concept is somewhat like that. You have divided the entire data set into small small portion and within one iteration within one iteration you will train your model with all data and then you will combine that loss error suppose we have 100 samples so first i've taken first 10 sample i've trained my model from second uh, sam uh, 10 sample i have trained another model third model within one iteration i will train all uh, data sample by all data sample and then corresponding each suppose i divided 100 data sample into 10 10 10 different group so you'll have 10 different models so you'll have 10 different loss function so you will combine or average all the values so that is how mini match is going to do so gradient descent on several data input together require more activation knee function to store the values so that is the limitation with the CNN model. Okay, already I explained these observations. Second, second objective of going for uh, deep learning like CNN, RNN, uh, uh, radial basis ones, not radial basis, uh, restricted Boltzmann machine, auto encoder, GAN network, all sort of things. So first most requirement is generalization. That means your data should not be data dependent. It should be generalized. Okay, so generalization will happen only if you have explored more variety of data you have explored and exploit this one so if you have a very good capability of finding the pattern so you'll have generalization so uh, if, to provide generalization you will require very less dependency on particular data it is not like that with one data i have trained very well but another data it is not performing what will happen overfitting model will happen so i require this generalization goal is to discover general pattern underlying data distribution online underlying data prediction Actually, good generalization. Okay, so what is happening? You can see that there is human phase. Then I'm trying to identify ages and this one. Then I'm making a little bit complex, and finally I'm trying to match images. Okay, so that I will come. How you are doing this one? That I will discuss in depth. Okay, so you require diversity. You require quantity of the large volume of data to get this generalization. 
the moment you are switching this deep neural network the complexity of model is increasing lekin the benefit of this one is that the moment complexity is increasing it will able to address more complex decision bound it will able to drive then it will suffer with the underfitting and overfitting of model so what is underfitting overfitting maybe this is clear to everyone otherwise i will take one slide on this one and what is overfitting happening when your model is working very good for training data but it is performing very poor for testing data it is like that it has very less generalization capability that means the phase which you have seen you will easily i able to identify but the phase which is very similar to that phase you are not able to identify because the training is less you are very much familiar with one one category of phase so that is training time if you will get testing time different variety of phases so your performance will improve okay so the in short thing that with the moment you are moving for generalization you are suffering with that testing error training error is almost good but testing error is no so like you take very simple example what is training i have trained with a different variety of cat cat and dog there is two cat and two dogs okay now what is happening testing time the third variety of cat cat and dog or dog is coming but the model is not generalized so maybe this call cat is identified as dog because my model is not generalized because my model is trained for only these two cats the third or fourth variety of cat maybe my model will not able to but if model is generalized then what i am expecting the model should able to recognize this also okay so uh, in case of overfitting you will suffer with generalization and this one so the in short you can see that there is some data pattern available you can fit simple line you can fit square line you can fit complex decision boundary the moment you are adding complex decision boundary it is suffering with overfitting it is like that you have learned this data very nicely but the moment i am adding some new data it is finding bit uh, difficult okay bit difficult uh, training you will suffer with the training error so i am uh, this is last slide before starting with the cna so this is like the moment you are going for left to right the model complexity is increasing what is happening your training error is going to become zero by testing error and is going to overshoot so after some time this is optimal plan we are training in testing error is both was reducing but after some time this blue line is going high and this green line, it is going to be tends to almost zero that mean negligible training loss but testing loss is more, uh, more. so this is only the, the difference between training and testing is your generalization the moment you have very less loss then generalization is very less if this gap is more your generalization is loss is more so my objective to find such a plan we have generalization so we don't want over fitted model we don't want under fitting model that is what correct so under fit and over fit depend on the context number of hyperparameter number of layers number of hidden nodes or number of weight range of values of weight activation process these are all parameter which is leading for this over fitted models okay so now uh, let us come directly on i am not going for this discussion directly i am coming on cnn model Huh. now let us understand this cnn so cnn is convolution neural network there is three operation what is convolution operation and there is pooling operation after that you have again convolution pooling convolution pooling this kind of operation is so how visual learning suppose any object you have to recognize any pattern you have to learn any any sensory uh, stimulus which you have to perform is going through same layer of structure first your retina will scan some objects then it will go the series of layers in brain and after that it will control or it will govern some motor parts so basically cortex cortex is the region here which is responsible for vision process okay so we have uh, taken through sensory organ eyes or see the image it went through the a uh, layer of structure it is not that like the moment you have seen the cat you will able to identify cat okay no first you will see the cat first you will try to identify eyes nose and then the different shape and layer by layer you will learn so you can see that how human brain is learning and how human brain is controlling different axa 
different uh, walking action or different hand movements so all sort of things is done by brain only your motor action okay so suppose uh, you have uh, you have to identify human face so i'm giving this is the layer structure so your eyes is there by which you have perceived the image and providing input image image is again some uh, and cross and dimension three pixel value <laughs> It is, it is it. Then layer one, how you are recognizing particular thing or animal? As you need to see the different features. As here we are looking for only identifying details. Do you see that there is two eyes? Lines are there. Four lines are. But what is the meaning of these lines? I don't know, but I try to extract some feature. Because I'm not providing any fancy or handcrafted feature here. Here, uh, this pattern is trying to learn this one. So at first layer, we have learned this one. This is shape. Which kind of shape? This is circle or this is lines. Okay. After that, next layer, I try to uh, make some complex geometry from here. So I see that there is two eyes. So maybe it is representing the eyes. I can combine these two lines and prepare the mouth. I can combine and know. What, what is happening? In the moment you have perceived through eyes, it's going in your LNG and then at layer one, V1. This is simple visual form of edges and corner where you have detected at layer one. You have identified these are the eyes and these are the nodes and uh, these are the lines. After that, at layer V2, you see that all sort of things are happening within microsecond. Okay, microsecond. So here what I've done, you have identified eyes, nose, and mouth. So obviously, you have two eyes, one nose, and mouth. So obviously, it is somewhat uh, structure. It is human being. So at layer third, what is happening? So I have tried. This is human face. So I have identified the objects. This is human being. Now, who is this person? So I will try to map in my memory that this is whose familiar face is there. Okay. The limitation of brain is that they can only identify the familiar face. They will not design some new face. Okay, and our brain is highly activated when we are sleeping. In the nighttime, brain is highly activated, but the limitation is that they learn only the familiar faces, new face they cannot generate. Okay, so this is, you can see that layer by structure, we move layer one, layer two, layer three. First, we try to identify, detect the age and corner at B1 layer within 60 second, millisecond, then and the 50, 70 millisecond, I try to form the group. And this is like feature group, feature mapping. So layer by layer, I'm trying to extract better feature. So I'm moving from local feature to global feature. Global feature that like eyes shape is different for each person. But ultimately, all human beings have eyes, nose, and mouth. So these are you are moving from local to global feature. You are moving from complex geometry, uh, simple geometry to complex geometry. So that's why people have uh, migrated from a neural network, deep neural network model to here. The objective only to try to explore how human brain used to think. So this pattern is very much close to human brain thinking. Okay. So supervised learning, already I explained what is happening. You have image, image is nothing. It's a matrix with the pixel values. So uh, in supervised learning or traditional machine learning, I require handcrafted feature. You need to tell this is height, this is uh, window size. What is these? All sort of things you have to provide input. Then you will apply some model and you will get output. But what is happening in machine learning, deep learning? You have this image. It automatically extracting lower level feature like it is trying to identify edges and corners. After that, you will try to make little bit complex, then more complex. And then finally, you will apply like last layer that is you are fully connected layer, and you will apply classifier for classification or predictive for prediction. Okay, so how it is happening, we are not explicitly providing any features to it. We are just, we are giving image as input. The model itself is extracting features. Okay, so we are going for, like you can see that how it is happening. Initially, we have identified only corners and some lines. Then a little bit, I made complex this amount, like this is window and all. Later on, we made more complex geometry. And finally, we are able to, this is, uh, Fan at the roof, these are the windows, these are the trees, and all sort of objects available. So layer by layer, I'm moving. So how I'm moving? I'm moving from local feature to global feature. So like image, in the image case, you'll have input is pixel. 
you will first layer uh, you will identify edge then you will find the texture motif part and finally you will identify entire of similarly in text you have corrected word word group clause sentence and so so this is how you are learning both in case of uh, image or in case of text in text case the most familiar model is ms model is recurrent neural network in which uh, what you will do rnm model you will require some memory also because if you are predicting i am speaking hello how are you so hello how are you or you have to add some extra word predict this uh, sentence correctly so you require some previous memory okay so then a short term memory a long term memory how much data you can store either you have to summarize entire story if you have one one page story is there you have to convert only one paragraph then rnn model will help video summarization is there image captioning is there the image is given you have to caption the image all sort of things you can done here to simple neural network fully connected that is clear now we are migrating on the deep neural or cnn model okay to so how we are reducing this number of parameter to overfitting okay so information processing is inspired by the biology biology so if you see that there is four input and four hidden layers so you have total 16 connection here four connection here so total how many connection you have 21 21 parameter which you have to learn those neuron has bias also but we are not looking for this one just we are looking in this connection list model how many connection total 21 one okay the moment i will go for because always this is challenge the image size will be too huge big size of image you will have that image you cannot uh, constrain with particular boundary so once you have a big size of image suppose 400 cross 400 and if it is rgb image you will have three layer rgb three planes if it is gray scale you will have Four hundred into four hundred into one. That means only sixteen thousand pixel value. But if you have RGB image, you have forty-eight thousand pixel value. The moment you will provide this input to my neural network, so your input is required almost fourteen thousand images pixel values. Because what it is, this is again matrix of four hundred into four hundred into three, sixteen thousand into three, forty-eight thousand. So this is my input. Suppose I'm using one hidden layer with forty-eight thousand. So you can assume that how many parameter you have to learn. 30 billion parameter and you have to store this value also so you can understand the complexity of model for single image i am doing if i am using 100 image of same type and you have 10 different image then you can see that uh, which kind of disaster it can leave okay if you see the parameters almost we will able to reduce the parameter suppose you will taking only under hidden layer in this case your number of neurons will change but still it is too large it is still too large so here i will uh, teach you the concept of parameter sharing so that you can effectively remove this condition or constraint to fully connected layer okay so now what is convolution operation let us understand this is given image for under into for into 3 that in total how many pixel values this actually image will uh, represent like pixel values okay the total you have 400 into 400 into 3 plans total 60000 48000 pixel values so if you provide in traditional neural network you require 48000 inputs in traditional 48000 but in case of this one uh, as i told that in uh, cnn model what i am doing i am trying to move from lower level feature to high level pair local feature to global feature so what i am doing i am applying some filters you you can have different filter like suppose you have to identify this phrase so phrase you will have one filter you have to see this uh, picture on the window so you will have another filter so you can have a different different type of filter you apply filter over this one and share weight among all this one and try to prepare the feature map okay here i am not giving anything here directly i have taken image as input So you see that that filter. Suppose this filter is what is this filter is doing? The main value it is uh, decreasing by minus four factor. Of diagonal element it is making the zero, and the neighbor condition it is making one one one. Okay, so it is maintaining the neighbor. So this is one particular feature to identify this kind of shape. So what I will I will uh, so in this case how many uh, what is the this uh, matrix size three cross three nine parameter. Those original image were forty-eight thousand. 
So in this case, only I'm using nine these para weight parameter. I'm sharing over this nine over entire image. Entire image. How it is moving, you can see that. So these nine weight. Earlier I was using forty thousand input. Now I'm using only nine. At a time I'm using this nine nine feature here. Then nine is going like I will scan entire image. So effectively, what I'm doing, I'm capturing some redundant feature also. Because actually, it is the filter will capture your special location. Okay, so what is at corner? What is as here? So suppose you just interested in to identify the fan. So in this case, I will only extract the fan. Why? I, why should I will put entire uh, fil uh, filter of size forty eight thousand and then try to identify only the fan? So let us have a small, small filter. Based on this filter, I will provide. This is what convolution operation is doing. So there is one signal, there is another signal, and then I'm trying to convolute this signal. Okay. So after applying one filter, I got this kind of image. That's the convolution. What I've detected, I've detected edges. Okay, vertical and horizontal edges I've detected. So you can have different different kind of uh, filters. Okay. So I'm. Let me tell what are these filters. Just you see this one. There is some input image, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six features are there. So what is happening in this case? Only you are returning the center value. Rest narrow condition will be zero. So this is identity. Whatever the image is there, it is just going to take as it is or most clear because you are suppose I principal feature I am remain keeping. Rest of the feature I am removing. That is okay. In this case, what is happening? Center value I am removing. Only I am considering the Neighbor condition, so I'm trying to identify some edge I'm detecting. So vertical edge, horizontal edge, diagonal edge. You can sharpen by multiplying center value by five or six times. You can sharpen the image. You can blur also image. You can decrease the value of this. So this is how a different filter can work. So you don't need to be worry about filters. Filter will already pretend model is available there. So this one. So now suppose we have an image of this bird. So I am uh, looking for only the beak or uh, suppose I am detecting only eyes. So why I will use this entire size of filter? I will use small filter and I will move over this and then I will try to identify it will detect eyes only or either beak. So some pattern are much smaller than the whole image. So for this I am using filter and that is nature inspired. Even uh, you have to identify birds. First you will see the, it has beak, it has eyes, it has tail. It has uh, two leg also. Based on this one, you will um, try to concrete or try to merge all features, and then you will predict this is entire image. So what uh, effectively I am doing here? Here I am trying to apply some filter which is just detecting beak. Okay. So that is what filter operation, convolution operation is there, and then you apply simple neural network with. Non-linear activation function, whether it is very low or soft max, okay, and you have detected peak. But what is happening? You will have ten different kind of, hundred different kind of, or n different kind of birds are there. Each bird has peak, so I will utilize same filter for ten different peaks. So I can merge also. I can type this parameter. So what is happening? There is two different images, and location is also different. Here the beak is in this position, and here beak is a little bit far because image you have no control over image. Same side of image you cannot take. So in this case, location is also doing. But this particular filter, which is for basically detecting the beak, it is trying to identify the beak. So it has detected beak, and I am merging same filter over here. So can we merge these two operation, and effectively we can reduce the. Number of parameters. So upper left big detector, middle big detector, but both are big detector. Let us merge both. They can be compressed with the same parameter. Okay. So what convolution layer is doing? How we are preparing feature in the convolution? So you have input image. So you can have uh, RGB of three planes or grayscale with one plane. So suppose n cross n dimension is there, and suppose you have uh, five different uh, uh, filter. One for beak detection, another for eyes, another for mouth, another for neck detection, another for tail detection. You can have a different filters. Okay, so uh, suppose we have beak detector filter. What is happening in beak detector filter? 
it will convolute over this entire image and try to prepare the feature map. So if you have one filter, you will have one image here. If you have n filter from same image, you will prepare n features map. This is we refer feature map. So this is what convolution operation is happening. We have a taken input image based on this filter. We have detected beaks and beak is coming in this point and I'm preparing my feature map. Okay, one for beak detector. Another filter, uh, another filter for eyes detection, then I will have image of eye detection. So this is what convolution operation is happening and this is my feature map where I'm preparing feature map. So let us see that how it is happening. Suppose this is your input image of six cross six. Okay, you can see that there is some diagonal lines, positive ones, some vertical lines, some off diagonal. So how many filter you require overall? You require one filter for these two diagonal, one filter for this one, one filter for... So effectively, with the help of three filters, you'll be able to identify what particular shape is this one. Okay, so like you have input image, you have filter one, filter two. This filter is for vertical line. Uh, this is diagonal line. This is for vertical line. You can have this kind of filter also. So how this filter is working? Each filter data set uh, detect a small pattern of three cross three. It will move over entire image. So let us see that how it is happening. So first I place the filter over there. We have taken the dot product. So only diagonal element are on the star zero. So you will get one plus one plus one, three. Okay. Now you can have a stride one or two. Why I'm doing striding? Striding is telling because if you will do a stride one, so you will have this dependent information which already you have detected through filter one. So you can take the jump also. You can directly move, start from here. So you can take the start line two or three because here I'm repeating local feature again. Okay. So suppose this time one, I'm again using these two columns. Those this is new column, but two columns already I explored, but again I'm using. So this way you'll get some. If you have a style two, style one, so you have prepared one feature map for filter one. Okay, so for this filter, I prepare this feature map. And you see that if you are going to diagnose this vertical line, so you see that where I'm getting maximum value three here. Yeah? Or three years. That means pattern is available in first quartile and third quartile. And yes, particular line is here. Okay. So I have identified these two lines. Because three, three is coming in. Now I'm using another filter, which is for vertical line. Okay, so vertical line, I will get maximum value here. So I'm preparing another feature. And dimensity also the highest value I'm getting here. Three. So initially I have six cross six. The moment I move. Uh, or over this uh, filter over this image, what is happening? I'm effectively reducing this left corner, right corner, topmost row, and bottommost row. Why it is happening? The moment filter will come here, and you will hear the filter will go out of this image. So that's why there is padding concept is there. If filter is three cross three, so I will have left and right padding of one one, and similarly bottom and top. Okay, so effectively what happened, I have applied two filters. There was single image, the dimension is chain six cross six two. I moved to four cross four of two different feature maps. One for vertical uh, line, another for diagonal lines. So, so feature map is prepared. Two four cross four images forming two. If you have uh, RGB three channels, so you have red, green, and blue channels. So one filter will generate three, three feature map, feature map. So you have two feature, Two filters, so you will have effectively six feature maps. Okay, corresponding each plan. Then final layer will be because this operation you will apply convolution operation and pooling or max pooling. So you, you can keep repeating this uh, operation till you will not find more concrete kind of features, more uh, global features. Okay, more uh, general general features you can see. Okay, from a specific feature to I'm moving for general. Then final layer, suppose I got some six cross six matrix. So I flattened this one, I made fully connected 36 layer, and the output, suppose digit recognition, I require zero to nine. So I require only 10 output. I will use softmax function with 10 output and input is 36. So the only the last most layer is the fully connected layer. So now understand how I'm reducing the number of parameters. So initial traditional neural network, there is image size six cross six, you require 36 inputs. All should be interconnected with first hidden layer, second hidden layer, third hidden layer, fourth layer neuron. But in this case, what is happening? I have uh, using filter of three cross three, only nine. So only nine connections are different connections are there. Then filter is moving on another. 
So what is happening now? Filter is moved. Sam nine can repeat. So what I'm doing? I'm repeating Sam weight. So at a time only nine connection. Those in traditional I need thirty six weight matches, but here I require only these nine connection and Sam nine weight. I'm repeating. So this is what parameter sharing concept is there. Okay. So the effective size will be four cross four. So this is like sharing the weight. Okay. So pure parameter, even fewer parameter. If large parameter, I will able to reduce the. So from 36 parameter, I have reduced only the nine weight which I need to learn, and same nine weight I am sharing with the with one filter. Those I can go for different weight also for same filter. Okay. So the whole CLN model which I discuss is that you have image. Suppose you are uh, whether uh, identifying or recognizing the objects. So image there, there is split and network is there like REST net, Google net, all net is there. Uh, like object, all sort of things is there. So image is there. So this is suppose RGB image. So dimension is n cross n into three. You will perform convolution operation. The convolution operation that means you have applying filter and then you are trying to prepare feature map. After feature map, there is next option in max pooling. So it is up to you how many times you want to repeat this one. This is like loop. You are repeating four times, five times, ten times. The last most layer is flattened layer, and you can have more than one flattened layer. And this is fully connected layer with the output. Suppose this is uh, like um, REST net or yellow net, uh, which is basically identifying cat or dog. Okay, or either you have a CIFR data set, uh, image set, in which you have 10 different objects. Okay, so you'll have 10 different outputs. So max pooling is, uh, there is, I'm not learning any uh, parameter here, only I'm learning parameter in convolution based on filter. So let us understand what is max pooling. So this is my feature map one, which I obtained through this applying this filter. Okay, so what convolution here, this is filter two and this is another feature map. So this is for vertical line. So now I'm applying pooling. There could be three kinds of pooling, like max pooling, mean pooling, Average pooling, some pooling. So, what pooling operation is doing? Pooling operation is not coming with some new parameter. It is just trying to down sample image, bigger image to image, uh, small image by retaining the principal feature. In PC also or auto encoder, I was only keeping the important information. This information I was ignoring because that was not significant. So, what is happening in per quarter? If you see that. The three is the highest feature. I will return this one. Yes, feature I can ignore. The narrow <laughs> condition I can ignore. In this case, I will return only zero. So you see that what is happening? The topmost value I'm keeping because this is max filtering, max value I'm returning. So effectively, I'm not losing any data because I have returned the principal features. Okay. So uh, now my size from six cross six to uh, four cross four to it is reduced almost half to cross two, two cross two. Okay, feature map. Initially, I had an uh, image of 6 cross 6. By applying 3 cross 3 filter, I obtained the image of 4 cross 4. Again, I applied the down sampling using max pooling. I got the feature of 2 cross 2. So effectively, I have reduced the image size. And still the quantity I can infer because I'm not losing those. It is lossy compression. It is like JPG image or uh, video you are compressing. So this is what uh, pooling. So you have some samples. So initially there is bad. So I'm retaining important features. So what I'm doing, I'm just compressing image. That is only the thing. Principal images I'm not losing because I'm getting the maximum value. So effectively here I'm not learning any parameter in this case. Fewer parameter to correct tonight. So the these are the benefits reducing number of connection. The weight sharing is happening because this is like uh, um, uh, parameter sharing concept and max pooling further reduce the complexity because effectively I'm reducing the half of the size of image. Okay, initially you have image of six cross six. After convolution, you got the image four cross four. If only one filter, then max pooling made two cross two image. If you have two filter, you will get two feature maps. Okay, again you can perform this operation: convolution, max pooling, convolution. So ideally, in real time, you will not get just six cross six image. You will get more. Uh, bigger size of image. Okay. So new image is smaller, but it is keeping significant features. So it is uh, returning all the important information. Okay, so now you see that uh, how we can apply this uh, whole together. 
all together like convolution max pooling convolution max pooling convolution max pooling. and let us take example and then i will show a small demo uh, one code i will run and i will show that how you are performing this convolution operation so first you have image convolution then applying max pooling you obtain the new image which is of two cross two and you are getting two feature map because you have used two filter smaller than the original image can repeat any time there is no as such uh, statics or any mechanism by which you can say that uh, this limit is correct you can do this operation 10 times 5 times 7 times okay so it is just if you are a domain expert you will learn that this feature is sufficient we have learned i will stop i will uh, see that that of google they have 7000 layers also 7000 layers Okay, so soon I will come on this architecture also. Okay. So, so last operation which was flattening layer, suppose final, after final convolution max pooling, I obtain this one, two feature of two cross two. So you will flatten like total eight values are there. You will make one simple line, then fully connected layer, and then you have output. So let us see that code, how we learn. There is model dot add convolution here. So the input image is 28 cross 28 and there is one is representing your is grayscale I mean if it is three then it is RGB okay and the filter you are using three cross three 25 filters so now I would like to ask someone who can help me so you have input image 28 cross 28 and this is grayscale image after applying 25 filter of three cross three what will be the size of my image after this convolution operation so image size I will get I will get 26 cross 20 because left right and top bottom row I will eliminate and you have 25 filters you will get 25 image of this size 26 cross 26 after applying convolution operation. So already it is written 20 cross 28 one for black and white three for RGB. Okay. So. This I'm going to tell initial image 28 cross 28. You have applied three, 25 filter of 3 cross 3. So you have obtained 25 feature map of 26 cross 26. The after max pooling, what is happening? It is just down sampling. I'm not learning any parameters. So now my image is 25 into 13 cross 30. Then again, I'm applying convolution. For convolution, I require filter. How many filter you are providing? 50 filter of 3 cross 3. So what will happen? The image size is your 13 cross 30. So now you'll get 50 into 11 cross 11, 15 to 11. Then again, max pooling applying the down sampling 15 to 5. And then finally, you will have flatness. So how many parameters you have learned? Here you have three filter of 25. So you are learning only nine parameter here. Nine into 25 you are doing. So you are learning only two 25 features. You see that for 28 cross 28 in traditional uh, neural network, you'll have more than 10,000 number of parameter which you have to learn. Okay. Then finally, split and layer. The so total you have 1250 neurons required. So this is fully connected layer. And then you have applied softmax. Generally, we'll apply the loop function at input layer and softmax. And the duty of softmax, it is for multi class output we use to because it will give. And uh, when you have n class output, you can apply softmax, it will give n output. With the probability distribution, the sum of entire n will be one. Okay, so with this uh, little bit, I will go for code. So I'm not going for more detail. Let me show you some models, retrain models. You can see that this model, this is Linet. Okay, so you can see that input image of this one. It is using six twenty eight cross twenty eight. That means six feature it is using. Then it is applying this uh, down sampling because this is convolution. It has used six filter. Then it apply max pooling. Then again it has used sixteen feature. Then max pooling. Then final it has using uh, two fully connected layers. Last layer it is you can have a flatten layer. So flatten layer after this you are doing flatten. So you have one forty, one twenty, then eighty four. So you have two fully connected layers. Okay, so you can have one fully connected layer, you can have two fully connected layer. It is up to you. Finally, you have output, and this is Gaussian collection. Okay, so that is the architecture of LeeNet. Similarly, you can go for ResNet, GoogleNet. Already, trend model is there. Like this, you can see that CNN architecture. Okay, so final layer is supervised layer. 
initial year is unsupervised. So you can see that uh, which uh, data set is very famous, CI, FAR data set, can, which has uh, 10 different objects and 60,000 images. And out of this 60,000, 50 is for training and 10,000 for testing. So different model explore, LXNet, ZFNet, VGGNet, Google LeeNet, MS, this is Microsoft. So you can see that the error rate is continuously decreasing and this is only 4% error, that means 96% accuracy. And the number of layers was in MS Microsoft REST net is 150 layers. Google net only 22 layers. So 22 layers still it is good, giving good performance, 7% almost. Okay, so this is how you can perform. So I will show the code now in which you can also apply this object recognition code. Okay, so you can directly visit this Google Colab. Google Go Live, okay. So I have my Google Drive. So one and two code which I executed that I will run here. Same code I share, already share in the GitHub. So you can access in the GitHub also. Colab notebook. So already pre trained model is there. Just I will tell you how you can apply, like if you have one person data set is there. Let us open this person data set. And uh, this Google Colab will provide you the facility of GPU. It is provided by the Google free of cost. So if you have multiple processing, parallel processing, that time you can utilize this one. MINST data set also there. Tell them you can ask some question also. So almost I've done with the presentation. This is just demo I'm going to show you. Okay. So Google Colab is there. That is platform of GPU functionality. Okay. So now you can see that what is happening here. Uh, suppose this is for MNST data set. This is for digital recognition zero to nine. So here I have applied, if you see that designing the model, what is happening? Model is sequential model I have applied. So first layer I'm adding in which I have convoluted and I have applied five cross five 32 filters. I've used activation function ReLU and the input image was 28 cross 20, which is my digit. Then I had applied max pooling, okay? Then it is up to you whether you want to apply average pooling or not, but both things you cannot apply together. Max pooling I'm applying. Again, what you can do, again, I, you can apply max pooling. So like layer two, so now I'm taking 60 feature of five cross five activation function rule, then max layer. And the final layer is a flatten, layer dot flatten. And then as output is because MINST data set 10 different image, you'll get 10 different outputs. So you can see that the code is running. And here also you can see that it is allocating the memory and GPU functionality, okay? So now you can see that model dot summary will tell you the sequence of model, how much model. So there is some permitting issue is coming whether code is running or not. Let us see this person data set. Okay, I'm running this data set. So the data set already available with the Keras repository, person data set. Okay, so person data set you can Export you can it will automatically divide into training image, training level, test image, test level. So all images labeled, all sixty thousand images label into ten different images. T salt, trouser, pullover, dash, poor, sender. So class you have ten classes, sixty thousand images. Almost each class you have six thousand images. Okay, so you can plot also some image, which number of images there, what is the size, what is the eight number of training image. It is like uh, send. Okay, so those it is uh, your RGB image. So all value are getting between zero to two fifty five, zero to two fifty five. What I'm doing the image size is twenty eight cross twenty eight. 
and the pixel value is coming between 0 to 2 beauty i so i'm dividing i'm normalizing this value because i'm converting to gray scale i don't want to three so what i've done i've divided all image by 255 to all value i will get between 0 to 1 after that again i plot same image so you can see that you will get some black and white images black and white all images converting to black and white okay then you can go for uh, uh, simple neural network or your convolution neural network, you require layer one flatten, image size 2820. Then, first layer, you have applied 180 neuron activation ReLU. Second layer, you have applied 180 ReLU. And final layer, I'm applying only 10 neuron because 10 different classes are there. So, this is the case of simple neural network. Okay. And what is the model is given here? Model is telling flatten layers, first layer, you have parameter 28 cross 28. Then you have 120, 120. So total number of parameters which we have learned is 118,282. Okay. Then you will train your model with the item optimizer, loss function is cross entropy, and the performance pattern is accuracy. It will run for certain epoch. Okay, 10 epoch it is running. So let us wait for 10 epoch. Yeah. So any doubt, uh, I can take some question till them because uh, this is how you can apply simple neural DNN model or CNN model. In CNN, only difference is coming. You are adding convolution, max pooling, convolution, max pooling, last layer, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, for 10 epoch iron, almost 180, 75 data set was for each epoch I was running. Okay, then you can see that testing accuracy it will report how much testing accuracy it is giving. So it is giving, uh, you can see here, the loss function initially was 0 0.4 and it was almost reduced to 0 0.2 and accuracy increased from 82 to 91%, okay? The testing accuracy, how much I'm getting loss is 0 0.3 and accuracy is 88, which is quite good. So there is testing and training accuracy is almost equal and loss function is also. Finally, you have to classify output because there is 10 output different level flow over these 10 different categories. So what I will do, I will apply softmax function Okay, and softmax function will uh, give you the probability, 10 different probability. So particular images belonging to which category? So for which I will get high probability, I'm getting 0 0.219, 0 0.23. So I'm getting object 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the object which I provide input is belonging to class 9 because I'm getting maximum probability here. It is also is giving predicted which model it has predict. Okay, before this I need to calculate this one. Is it predicting ninth one? Because I'm getting maximum value of probability for ninth one. Okay, so you can give some different image as input uh, as testing. Testing because during testing time you are giving some different matter model. Okay, so as I'm not specified here which image you are giving, you can give uh, where testing model is here. Train and training. Okay, you can uh, usually specific image also you can give here. Okay. So now I'm predicting one. one which is. So the Second option is uh, images belonging to second class, okay? Test level is nine only. Second highest category is coming for which one? First one. Second, third highest category you will get for. This is probability value where we see are coming, okay? Finally, you can generate fancy this uh, curve also. Uh, confusion matrix kind of things. And you can see also like image i equal to one to this one it is showing that which class that particular image is belonging to. like this pullover is belonging to class two and i'm getting almost 100 percent accuracy okay you can have image i equal to 12 you see that it is belonging to this one you can change the value of i equal to 10 also so different object will come okay different object is coming this is like quote with the 91 probability and little bit it is giving probability for second class and sixth class also you can change the value of this one. Fine. So code I will share with you. Now it is coming. It's with the end of us. 
So this is for group of image. I'm looking for single single image. You can go for group of image. You see the probability in this case and caching. So like particular things. So code I will share with you. So with this, I will try to finish uh, this session and I will open for question answer. So if you have any question, I will uh, happy to answer all these queries. If you have any question, so I will request to participant if they have question, they must answer. I mean, ask question. Yeah. So I finish with the, my presentation now. Yeah. Either you can write in chat box also. Any question, any question, any student they can ask any sort of question. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah, hello, sir. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir, I am a student actually. It's a student. Correct, correct. Yeah, please. Yes, sir. Actually, what process goes in deciding the number of layers and number of neurons in each layer? Is it by done by trial and error method, or there is some other? There are some other methods also. That is a good question. Number of neurons and number of layers. Okay. So generally, uh, it is like uh, as such, there is no uh, logic there. Okay. By which you can decide that this much of neuron is sufficient. Generally, people have already worked there. So, like uh, the transplanting, but concept is there. The model is already pre-trained. They have fixed layer of neuron, like you have seen ResNet. They have one fifty-two layers with the certain neurons. Okay, so that is designed for a particular data set, like uh, world-class uh, world error counting or uh, suppose object reports. So, if you are exploring uh, these kind of models, that time you don't need to worry about this one. Otherwise, it is hit, hit and trial model. And you have to see that how much layer is sufficient. So based on performance only, you can decide. That is true. That is true. There is no as such technique available. Yeah. How much? Is there one more question, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, so actually, why is ReLU uh, ReLU activation function became so popular? Which what are the advantages provided by ReLU over the other activation functions? Yes. Uh, very good question. That is it. So ReLU is. Uh, Linear or non-linear activation, but this is like you see that uh, almost sigmoid, softmax. These are your non-linear activation function. Okay. Yes, sir. Once you differentiate, once you will differentiate these images. Okay. These. So suppose uh, sigmoid. If you are uh, agree with me, sigmoid, you are getting value between zero to one. Correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Zero to one. Softmax also you are getting value zero to one with the probability distribution. Okay. Once you are taking gradient. So the value is reducing with two zero to point two five. The uh, if I'm able to draw, let me just give me one minute. I will draw one diagram. Okay. Let me draw one diagram, Anna. Drawing to yes, I need like pen I'm taking. So this is what uh, ReLU function uh, X function. Okay. If will uh, this value is point five. Okay, and this is one and this is zero. So all higher negative value are turning to zero, all positive value are going for one and the rest value are coming. If you differentiate this one, you will get caro like this. The, the, the softmax function is one upon one upon e raised to power minus x. And the value is reducing with zero to 0 0.25. What is happening? Your gradient is becoming very small, 0.25. And if you have 10 layers, it will suffer from vanishing gradient problem. Okay, similar case, hypertangent also. What is ReLU function? ReLU is piecewise linear function. Uh, okay. So for negative value, it is almost zero. For positive value, it is linear function, y equal to x. Okay. Y equal to x, you can assume. And the ReLU function is what? Uh, the value z is provided by max of zero and x. Ah, zero and x. If it is negative, it is giving zero. If it is positive, it is y equal to x. And always you are getting some constant value. You are never getting like 0 0.25 minimum value. It will differentiate, you will get one always. So it will not suffer with this vanishing gradient problem. Got my point? Yes, sir. Meaning it is sensitive to the, the higher values. Means the 10H and the remote function are not sensitive to higher values. Change in higher values. Ah, now, now it is also suffering with the value when you are getting differentiation for negative value, it is zero. The saturation yes, is for negative positive value, it is okay. Then we are going for leaky ReLU. 
it's a little bit uh, tilt uh, diagram like y equal to minus x or something. So first reason it is not suffering with the minus in gradient problem. Which one? Zero. Okay. Second yes, thing that it is computationally very fast because we made le piecewise linear function. It is computationally very fast compared to sigmoid. Okay. Because differentiation is y equal to x is also dy upon dx is one. Almost we are getting yes, one and third thing at the final most layer where is flattened layer always you are applying which one? Softmax function. Why? Do we have an answer of this one? Softmax. Why we are applying softmax in the final layer, fully connected layer? Any guess? Um, it is a it is an output layer, sir. I guess. Okay. No, sir, we have no, to apply uh, sigmoid also. We can apply ReLU also there. No guess, sir. I I am not on. I have not an I answer. I will tell you. Okay. So ReLU, what is happening? If you are getting input x equal to five. So why I am getting five? Okay. If I am getting x equal to one, why I am getting one? Okay. So you will have a value between one to thousand, one to twenty thousand at output layer. What is the meaning of this one? In case of softmax and sigmoid, always you are getting value between zero to one. Probability you will get like first you are getting zero point two, second you are getting zero point eight, and three you are getting zero zero zero. So for second class I am getting point eight, so I will believe that eighty percent confidence this one. So in the softmax function, you are getting probability value between zero to one. So if you have ten class, you will get ten different probability. Okay, and the sum of probability will be one. The sum of probability yes, in case of softmax. So what will happen? You will have uh, like you tell twenty percent is going to class one and thirty percent. But if you are getting five hundred, what is the meaning of five hundred? Two hundred. So no use. That's why always uh, uh, last most layer is your softmax layer because this is. A multi-class output, or whether you have to predict some value. In prediction, you can easily apply ReLU because you prediction you can get any kind of values. Okay, so uh, it was very good question, and uh, I thought that that was the nice discussion. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, sir. No, sir. Someone else who, who is interested to ask question. I think that there is no more uh, question. Professor uh, Vijay. Yes. Uh, Professor Vijay. Uh, uh, there is one question on behalf of the student. Uh, by me. Uh, so, what are the various uh, deep learning uh, uh, platform provided by these giant like Microsoft, uh, Google, and uh, Amazon? Is those big uh, software company? Who having a very big base and <laughs> running all over the world. So, what are the various deep learning tool you can say, or software you can say, or online you platform uh, give, uh, provided by them uh, for deep learning purpose, where a student can take benefit uh, by using of hands-on or feel some uh, training at there. So, please. This is a very good question, sir, from Devaka, sir. So the thing is that, like, uh, uh, first I will talk about different platform. Software is not concerned. You can go for this Google Co Lab, but Google Co Lab is a little bit slow because those it is giving you have the functionality of a uh, uh, multi-core system. Because generally, where system is uh, single core, so you can, if you have required like data processing, then you can go for Google Co Lab. Otherwise, you have Spider. The spider is PyCharm. Uh, which software you can download and you can run in your machine also. If you want machine, but in this case, you need to install packages. So now as I'm coming on, which software is there? Like TensorFlow is there. Uh, Keras is there. Uh, you have Scikit-Learn also, almost some deep learning model, but mostly model you will get in TensorFlow. And TensorFlow require you um, background understanding of this uh, uh, multi-core system. That's why we are most of the code in Google Colab is running on the uh, TensorFlow. We are using Keras also because most of the data set available in Tira. So I think that if you explore Keras and TensorFlow, you will get all sort of CNN models, whether it is restricted Boltzmann machine, whether it is a deep neural network model, whether it is CNN model or RNN. So uh, I have explored mostly TensorFlow. Keras is also there. You can go for Scikit-Learn also. Scikit-Learn for especially using for text processing, very rich libraries is there. In Google Colab, easily you can go. You don't need to install all packages, but once you are running on your system, you require PyTorch and uh, this spider. 
despite the software which I found. And uh, that is only. And for package, you can install TensorFlow and Keras. Almost they are providing all, all uh, sort of models, whether it is uh, ResNet, whether it is uh, Google Net, whether it is um, a Lee Net. So almost 10 or 15 models uh, related to CNN is available. Model. So you just need to apply transparency as I'm doing. So here I'm specifying, otherwise you can directly run that model by providing input and output. So basically, uh, one more question. Yes. Yes. Uh, one, one more question from my side. Uh, this uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, there is computer vision uh, uh, package or tool is available in Microsoft Azure. So, um, have uh, that supporting this deep learning model? Uh, sir, Microsoft Azure, I heard it is like cloud, but sir, I'm not aware whether it is supporting it. But MATLAB, now they are providing this model. MATLAB has this TensorFlow as well as Keras model. But directly, they are very good also. Keras and all, all I've given in the MATLAB, almost 25 CNN models are available. So, uh, Azure, okay. I don't about, sir. Azure, I don't okay. uh, uh, What about this? Uh, if anybody wants uh, to work with satellite images uh, for something, so uh, uh, what is the guideline for that roadmap right. for uh, so doing that? This, this uh, high computing machine, because simple laptop, I don't think that uh, because these images are of high resolution, okay, sir, and we require GPU system. GPU, those this Google Colab is providing GPU, but you see that only in 5000 of 28 cross 28 image, it is almost taking 10 to 15 minutes. So, satellite image we require first GPU computing uh, server kind of machine which can support this kind of computer and we require GPU. And then any model will work. So, basic machine requirement will be there for you because satellite image is of huge uh, dimension image. So, uh, if we compare it uh, with, uh, you have any hands-on with uh, Vika? Vika, Vika, is, uh, Vika in Microsoft, they are using very much for uh, machine learning. So, uh, you have a, a, any use case for the image like deep learning in Vika? No, sir. I've never used Vika also. Mostly I've used this one because my basically my domain is this human activity recognition gate and my data is very small. Not big size. Okay. My density. Okay. So that's why I'm unable to explore these data. So if if we compare this uh, Python, uh, means Python means Python lang programming language for CNN and uh, MATLAB programming language for CNN. So uh, which which one have a good uh, means uh, good uh, um, uh, less time to to learn them. So uh, Python is good because in MATLAB, what they have, they have provided all model TensorFlow, but it is again black box. Again black box. Okay. They have, like earlier it was neural network, now they have given all all CNN models, ResNet, Google Net, but it is again they you will just drag and you will apply. And almost Python is very easy to learn. And that is my belief. Even R language we can explore. R also is there. After Python, R, but Python is almost very easy, very easy one. And most of the library available in Python. In uh, MATLAB, what will happen? Those will have able to explore these models, but will not customize like we are customizing here, number of layers and all. With very and every code is available on internet. Every bit of code available in the Python in the internet. The beauty of this one, and Python is uh, so very fast. Uh, professor, one uh, one more question: uh, What is the future of this computer vision and deep learning for next five year or not ten uh, or next ten year? Because uh, every big giants like Microsoft, Google, and all other big companies are uh, going to provide uh, like Alexa, Siri, or this type of thing are uh, custom uh, built in uh, available in uh, each and every place. So why should not go for these uh, typical things? So what is the future of uh, for next five years of in computer vision, and deep learning, and uh, all these technologies? Uh, sir. So if say for speech technology, if speech we are very advanced still. So in speech we don't have much scope. I think that, but computer vision uh, we have uh, very good scope in robotics also, sir. Nowadays during this COVID, uh, mostly people are trying to deploy for uh, hospitality industry as well as medical domain. 
robot where they require a very good uh, computer vision techniques uh, for tele operation or tele serving kind of things because uh, to serve the covid patient the if human person is going the it will lead for casualty we can deploy the robot in such a uh, position so in this case computer vision technology because very sophisticated uh, devices and low cost devices is already available in the community so i think that uh, this is uh, area where we can apply in computer vision robot path planning uh, or google autonomous car which is also utilizing because so far it is uh, beyond the reality it will take another 5 to 7 year to come but computer vision is put of scope computer vision those in speech and vision process vision processing will have the less uh, capability but uh, the area where we can apply this computer vision is robotics one field in the google car driving and uh, even recommended system kind of things also almost very much work has done so i think that next five year it is good opportunity in the computer vision yes uh if as a bachelor uh, degree prospective like would be a student of uh, be for four, four year student so is the suitable to go they in computer vision or they go with master degree or any higher degree with uh, in this field uh, yes sir higher degree is always important because many times uh, diploma courses uh, because most of the university they are looking for degree diploma courses maybe you are very good expert but that time they are not giving weightage so must go for higher uh, degree my uh, suggestion that they must go for ms or phd okay during this they will get very good get on deep learning and uh, vision processing and recommend uh, system all sort of domain they can go for uh, so, uh, uh, higher degree is always required so many places they they are looking only for degree whether you have diploma courses maybe they will not give much weight so so i think uh, the um, uh, if we have a batch of uh, 60 then 4 to 10 students are able to uh, complete the journey of deep, deep learning with computer vision with uh, uh, good uh, handed guide like you so remaining 50 students uh, where they go so i think uh, for this uh, that purpose they have a, they go with some other technology because uh, in uh, this re- computer vision and deep learning thing uh, multi domain uh, knowledge i think is required or or continuous hands on is required with good uh, uh, guide uh, good guide so is it uh, true or uh, something else Yes, sir. Multi-domain is required. Even robot is also they require understanding of mechanical, electrical, sensor. So, like computer vision, they require first understanding of sensor. Then they require the understanding of cognitive also. Like uh, one thing which I forgot to mention now, cognitive robotics. That is emerging field where they are using brain-based computation, EMG-based computation. So, cognitive robotics is the future. Like uh, to teach the human baby for learning A, B, C, D. pedagogy system there they are deploying uh, the robot also so cognitive area is also one gray area where people can pursue this one and at least out of this 60 five or six or 10 student uh, should secure admission in higher degree like what is renowned university and it is not difficult the area is very open deep learning and you will get easily recognition also in this domain i know that because publication is also easy to get in this domain most of the journal is related to this one very good hardware and software sophisticated is there as sir was asking satellite those this domain is very specific very much you have to understand is required but uh, in computer vision it is manageable uh, manageable you don't require much understanding of different domain you will learn easily it is not that much difficult like satellite or other areas so i hope that at least 10 students should go for master degree in the top renowned university of what so the domain uh, is as you know as you knowing this mp from i think last 2 uh, uh, to 5 year so is there the um, interest of uh, in uh, undergraduate student in this domain uh, are they motivated for uh, doing this uh, this uh, in interesting work in future 
uh, you find any interest in MNIT or uh, any any M any uh, institute in the MP? N MP means sir, MP. Madhya Pradesh. Acha MP, okay, okay. So good student MP regarding to this domain. Ah, uh, sir, even IIT Indore also they are working in this one in CSE, but very very basic work they are doing. One or two faculty mostly are working in theoretical computer science and this one. Here also people are speaking much, but I I would suggest that uh, for this uh, Triple IIT Hyderabad, IIT Hyderabad. IIT Madras, they are working very good in deep learning. If you are talking about media, and in the world, you can go for simple Stanford and CMO. Very easy. CMO also very good. CMO, they have computer vision laboratory. Then Japan also doing very good in computer vision. Japan. Yeah. So, uh, each, uh, Madhya Pradesh is um, mentally prepared to work in this technology like our student is uh, mentally prepared to doing in this technology like you have a resident in MNIT for all over I'm India. I am only the faculty available to teach deep learning here. The thing is there. The, mostly new faculty is ready but old faculty is not ready to teach this kind of subject oh, yeah. here. Yeah. So we are not learning this problem. automated reality kind of things. Yeah. Okay, okay. This, this one is the problem for all MP. New technology are not uh, adopted by teachers, so it's been I think uh, working in this domain. If you see the profile of CSE faculty, mm -hmm. so they are working in, uh, in machine learning, but very few you'll find like deep learning and kind of interest. No, no, I uh, I think no no one founded in uh, uh, deep learning. Only K R Pardhan, the Sunny Sab have a good knowledge in this. Uh, and uh, in rest of MP, I uh, I don't find any expertise in this uh, as per my so uh, my my knowledge. So how a student can go without uh, without teacher? <laughs> they they go with but, unsupervised training. <laughs> correct, sir. So one thing what they can do, sir, there is some courses nowadays. This COVID time, they are providing. This is free of course. Stanford University, very good course they are running. And do NG and someone else on deep learning. One course okay. is from IIT Madras. IIT Madras, uh, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, he's very good. Young young uh, person is there. Uh, his video lecture is really available on internet on deep learning. Uh, please, yes. please share the link of both uh, Madras, uh, IIT Madras. I will, and, say, I, will uh, I will say IIT Madras, very good lecture on the deep learning. Those practical aspects they have not taught, but theoretical, they are full of uh, understanding and full of knowledge. Uh, okay, uh, so any any questions from the student side? If any, please ask uh, within a 10 second. Otherwise, we go for uh, closing the discussion. Or uh, any question from uh, uh, participants? So I invite uh, uh, this uh, board of thank team to board of thank to Dr. B.J. Baskar, sir. Thank you. Germed in the seats of industrial exposure and with deep expertise of related topics, which market demands is a must condition for student to endeavor in future. So turn the disc over the zones of startups and entrepreneurship is blooming in the era of modernization. Even it is said that journey of thousands might start from a single step and adding glitters to the glory. Thanks to a lot, sir, for enlightening us with the brushing skill sets and words of your wisdom. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Yes. Sir, thank you, sir. So, thank you, Vijay, sir. You have given such a good knowledge to our students. In fact, the whole Madhya Pradesh, in fact, the whole India, in fact, the whole over world. You are connected online through Facebook and through YouTube. Your lecture is uh, uh, live. So I think uh, all over world, we, we benefited with your uh, today's lecture. And student may uh, get uh, uh, repeated uh, to see in uh, Facebook and live if they required. And so, um, if any confusion is there, they can go with uh, YouTube live or Facebook and they repeat your lecture where they have any confusion. And they can uh, go um, uh, with you at MNIT and uh, understand more more closely if any difficulty is there. So thank you, Vijay Bhaskar, sir, for um, providing sir, very one question. Important. One student has asked one question. This is Manudi. Yes. Manudi has asked one question. Yeah, yeah. Is for a person who want to work in data science industry, do we need to learn web development? 
No, no, it is not required. Baby, right? data science is totally statistical kind of technique. Right? It's also gray scale data science, big data, and all of fields are open. So no need to worry about whether they have to learn web development or not. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you, Vijay sir. Thank you to all. Thank you, everybody. Uh, tomorrow lecture is started at uh, ten thirty. Uh, by Professor uh, um, Patel uh, from uh, uh, NIT uh, Kurukshetra, and uh, he again provided uh, providing some medical imaging and deep learning technique uh, on the image itself. So uh, that is a very much useful to all of uh, our student and participants. Please join uh, at ten uh, thirty tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. This conference is no longer being recorded. Thank <laughs> you.